Hello. Welcome back to the to the stream, to the new game. Let me get the music a bit down for me. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna continue from where we um, from where we were last uh, last time. Um, actually, I'm, I'm gonna show a bit of what I've done since uh, since last time. I've uh, done so, uh, done some research on um, localization and implemented haze are not and uh, implement implemented the uh, localization system in uh, in the game currently we we are not sure if we're going to do localization for the game but in case we're going to do it uh, the system is going to be in place and uh, yeah ready to use it's also going to help us uh, yeah do do string formatting for yeah uh, yeah string formatting uh, m much more easier because we want uh, we want it to to do it from code it's gonna be done from the editor and it's gonna be a bit easier so let's see let's get into the yeah so I have a I have a demo scene for localization right now it's not actually used in in the game let's say it's just a test but i think we're gonna we might be able to do something with it uh today we'll see okay so i have a simple text component and what's special about it it has a the game object has a has a new component uh this uh, localized string event which basically um connects this test, uh, text component with the with uh, an entry in a table that we've made so we have somewhere in the project here so we have uh, localization tables we have one table right now it's called game ui and we have only one key for the uh, for the moment because that's we need only one for for testing and we have to to localis so we have english and romanian and we have yeah we have basically have the uh, some some text defined in each of them with the correct uh, spelling for each i mean almost correct spelling cuz yeah almost the correct versions of the words in the specific language and uh, some special some special uh yeah, variables or macros or whatever that uh, that the system understands and can uh, uh, replace with uh, with values at uh, at runtime. So yeah, what yeah so basically so basically this component uh, I mean this component this uh, localized string uh, connects this uh, this uh, this uh, text mesh pro component to this key in the table to the health key. So here it is game UI health, and basically what this means is whenever I so so as you can see it's it says new text in here so it's the yeah the default text that uh, that the components came uh, comes with, uh, but when I when I play the game it's gonna write the the text in English. So yeah by default uh, by default the, the language is English so it wrote health and the values that I that I specified. And I can uh, let me asset management scene controls. So I have so it has this this tool. Uh, so I can change the the locale. So now I can switch to Romanian, and it changed automatically uh, the, the the language, and it updated the text. And uh, also those those values uh, they are coming from somewhere. There is a there is a special object that contains those, so it's a, what they call a global variables group. And here you can define you can define your variables and uh, and the, the values for each. And you can have different uh, different types of, uh, of variables. You can also nest them if you if you want. So you can uh, 
make logical groups, I guess. Yeah. And right now, yeah, that, that's, that's what we have. They're not changed in code, they're just hard coded in here. But that's one thing that we're gonna do today. We're gonna try to to integrate this uh, this uh, variables group with uh, with our components from ES framework. But that uh, we're gonna do that uh, a bit later. Because because uh, right now um, yeah we have to some bugs to fix. And that's gonna be yeah that's that's uh, much more important right now. Yeah, but anyway, so so yeah, we we have this. We can change the as I said, we can change the locale. Uh, it's gonna update the text automatically, and we can define. Um, we can have as many keys as we want. We can have whatever text we want. We can use the the the, the variables that we set in in the other asset. And what uh, one need to check that uh, that it has. Uh, we we connected this to uh, to to a sheet, so basically we can uh, and pull changes from uh, from a Google sheet that we have in our in our drive account. So we can, uh, for example, send that sheet to to someone that does translations. He can write the data in there, and then we can just import it import the data into Unity just by pressing this pull button. So that's um, yeah, that's interesting. Okay, but now let's see, let's see what we, what we have to do. So uh, last week uh, we did we did two kind of major changes in the code. Um, the first one was uh, so we have uh, let's let's get this uh, let's get the the playground scene running okay so tower and you have this spline and what we did last time um we we actually cached the um we actually cached the the, the position of the of the splines so actually i ha i actually uh set that to hidden let's go to debug i think we're gonna see it in debug yeah no we can't even see it in, in debug mode okay that's interesting i thought we we're gonna see it anyway so so basically the idea we we cache the the position of the spline we before we we were calculating it but we we needed the position on the spline. and now uh we we cache the the the, the spline or yeah, positions on the spline we cache it beforehand, and we use that of calculating it every time. And apparently we have, yeah, sometimes th there are some errors throwing. Uh, I don't know why, but that's uh, that's a thing we're gonna look into uh, today. And another bug that we have, uh, we uh, another major change that we did. So for each module that we have. Um, instead of so 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 previously we had a uh, the the prefab yeah we had the prefab and we had hard reference to the prefab in here so hard reference to to the to the actual prefab and right now we're using addressables and um, loading the the prefab free, ah, loading the prefabs whenever we need it whenever we need them and somehow by doing that we we um, we made some some yeah something wrong in the code because uh, some uh, splines I don't know if we is the case in here but uh, some uh, splines in the yeah in the composite spline appear multiple times in here yeah it's not uh, not the case for this one, but I, I've seen the the error before. Actually, there are two. It's not gonna happen because there are two items, and I know there are two uh, ten uh, ten uh, ten items, and there are ten uh, ten modules in here. But I, I've seen times where there were eleven items in the in the list. Uh, 
to investigate that to see why that happens. Not sure why it, why it happens though. But yeah. So yeah, uh, we're gonna start by by fixing those those two problems because uh, we we are fresh on the code and we should be able to to find the find them easily. And after that, we're gonna continue working on the foundation of the game. We're gonna start uh, uh, modeling some more data for yeah, what what we have here. So we have uh, some enemy definitions, assets, uh, wave definition, upgrades definition. Yeah, we're gonna have some yeah some assets, and we're gonna do some data modeling. First, we we have to start with this. So yeah. We, so we fixed uh, all the bugs that we know of. Okay, so let's see. I'm gonna start with the yeah with the with the with the bug from the spline. So um, okay, let's track the time. Uh, let me actually do something real quick. Ah, God damn it. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, I saved the, the, the error that I that I got. So basically we have an index out of, index out of range error uh, on a certain line. Theoretically it shouldn't happen, but it does. So yeah, we have to see why why this is happening. I'm gonna try to, to reproduce the bug in the editor so we're gonna have uh, not only the stack trees, but we're gonna be able to look into the into the bug and all the variables in there. So let's let's start with this. Okay, so let's go to where the bug actually happens. So uh, the this is this is the line where the where the, the problem occurs. Actually, let me make sure, but I, I'm pretty sure that's that's the line. Yeah, 132. That's the line. Yeah, so basically this cache index uh, goes over the length of the array. And I'm not sure why, but uh, yeah. Uh, we're gonna find out right away. But I guess the, 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 the easiest way of doing this is to, to try to reproduce the bug. So we're gonna set up a. Let's start by enabling debug mode, and we're gonna put a break in here. Try to get a bug when it happens. So let's do control breakpoint. Cache array dot length equals this cache index. So if this happens, we know the the bug is gonna is gonna occur because we have an index that's equal to the length. So we have a conditional breakpoint. Let's attach. Let's attach to the editor, and yeah, we're gonna we're gonna try to to reproduce this. I haven't seen this in a lot of cases. So I've I've seen it a couple of times, but I haven't seen any patterns in in yeah in why it happens. But yeah, we're gonna just uh, play the game and uh, hope that we. Hope that it triggers. Because the idea is, I, I'm not sure why. So we can look at the code while while that ha while that is happening. We can look a bit at the code to see maybe we. Understand why it happens. So first of all, what is this? Oh, so this is the value that comes from the select, and I divide it by the step. And this length is a float. I hope. Yeah, it's a float. This, this division, it's gonna be, it's gonna be correct.
Yeah, the, the bad part is that I don't know why, when this happens. So we might wait here for like 10 minutes and the bug might not might not reproduce. So we might not be able to reproduce it. So I think I'm going to wait for a bit and then uh, try to do another tower. Maybe there's a certain piece of the tower that uh, that uh, goes into this corner case or I don't know. Yeah, I'm not. I'm really not sure why why this would happen. Okay, so let's try to 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 see what's happening here. So, what are we doing here? So, so so this this method it's a method that recalculates the cache. So what I said earlier uh, last time we did a uh, we 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 did this method that. Um, uh, uh, yeah, basically cache is the position, it caches some positions on the spline in, yeah, once every 10 centimeters. That's what this would mean. And, um, yeah, that, basically that's what this code does. Yeah, this is, I don't think we're gonna, we're gonna hit the error. I feel like when I saw the error, this happened much more earlier. What I might do though, might increase the tower height. Uh, not crazy amount, 20 modules. And um, increase the chance of uh, this uh, actually showing up. I think I think I have all the modules in here, if I'm not mistaken. Or yeah, we even helix. Yeah, but we still don't see it. I mean, I could head and expand the tower, and I, I think that's that's what I'm gonna do though. Let's um, actually on the tower builder we can call the expand function. Increase it, and see what happens. Okay, so we have we got a a null value. That's interesting. How would we get a new uh, null value? Huh. Okay, so the null value is consistent. Okay, I don't know if this happens. This is a bit weird, but I it's I don't think it's related to anything we've done in here, so Yeah, we're gonna try to, to run it again. Come on. I'm gonna look at the first yeah. I'm gonna look at the stack trace a bit. Maybe I, make it, maybe I can understand wh where the, the, the error comes from or something. Oh, okay, so maybe, maybe I understood this, this wrong. But maybe it happens. Hmm. Yeah, let's go to a module. Yeah, because now that I think about it, um, what was it? So, so this method. It's not all the runtime. You you you'll have to change. Uh, you'll have to change something on the on the on the spline, either the global tower data, which you, which you can change because it's only one object, or you can put it on null. But 
I haven't done that because it makes no sense. And you can you also change the points. So I think I think actually the problem might be so let's just get a module. Right. I think I might have to 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 try it with all the modules. So let's try to recalculate the cache. Did we have a hit? No. The the they the froze a bit, but yeah, no. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go through all the modules and uh, recalculate the cache and see which one triggers the the error. So no, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna save that. Let's try split. This did nothing. This did nothing. It would be weird not to see the error now. Because I've seen it a couple of times. But it's for sure uh, an edge case. But without any way of reproducing it, I don't know. I don't know how to identify it. I mean, I could just tear the code for for a while and try to understand why it happens. But I would like to avoid that if, if possible. And just try to recalculate the paths manually. They just seem to work, which is weird. Let's try this one. Uh, recalculate. Yeah, so, so each, each of them, each... Yeah, they work perfectly, which is totally stupid because I, I've definitely seen the error. I mean, I have a stack, a stack trace from the error. But I don't know why it happens, and that's stupid. It might be. I don't know what it could be. So, so I know I've seen it at runtime. I might try to 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 edit a path maybe at runtime and see what it does. Maybe 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 something from here or something. I don't know. So, okay, so the editor froze a bit, but still no error. So yeah, because a lot of things are are happening on the screen or in the back this takes a bit uh, a bit longer than usual this doesn't take in the editor it's it's almost instant i mean we might be able to just pause the game no it still does a lot of stuff in the background yeah, i still don't i still don't reproduce the bug so 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 no errors and also no no hit on the breakpoint This is so weird. So weird. You see, very, very strange. Let's try to add another breakpoint. Maybe that's it. Okay, this froze. On Unity, you can do it. Thank you. No, still no hit on this. So weird. So, so weird. Hmm. I mean, I can always just clamp this value and not get the error, or at least so. So, so 
the problem is that it threw an error and the, the execution stopped for that function. And I don't know. I don't know what it uh, what it affected there, but I could just um, that is. So I could just clamp it, and before that, do a do an if check, uh, and just uh, console error, uh, throw yeah throw an error in the console, but not uh, or write an error in the console, but not throw the error, so it doesn't stop the execution. Or it or even, but actually not clamp it. I just I I just don't save the position if it's if the if. Uh, if I'm out of the bounds of the array, yeah, I don't know. What's this? Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure what to do. Not quite sure what to do. Because yeah, as I said, if I don't reproduce the error, I can't do anything. So I can't look at anything. Let's try to look at the code. Let's try to read the code and maybe we, we get what it happens. So we have what do we have here? So we look through all the waypoints, except for the last one. And we go through, yeah, so we need the actual waypoints. Why do we need them? Because we have this angle in, we need the angle in the height of each waypoint. So we do, so we can do this lerp, yeah. Then we need the length of the segment. Yeah, the distance from those two waypoints. And then we go through... Oh, I think I see it, actually. So this, yeah, yeah, keep it. So this goes to length plus step. But here, when I'm do the, I'm doing the division, I should, I should divide by this. Should do this if. Uh, early no because actually I don't care about going to step so what so what I what I what I need actually is no because I because I, I clamp it to one here so it doesn't matter so what I'm going to like like a step further if the if this k value just passes over the length I just want to clamp it to length or in this case, I clamp it to one because, yeah, that's what I'm doing here. I'm dividing by length. So no, actually, this is correct. If I didn't have the clamp, that would be an issue because it would it would be able to go above one. But that's exactly why why I've done this. So I can clamp it to one. So it should be one. But now the question is, what happens when it's actually one? Because this, because well, if it's one and you add a step, or or more like if k is is the length and you add a step, yeah, it shouldn't. I might just make this this smaller. Just, because I'm thinking maybe maybe it's something like a floating. Error. And this, uh, so the value in k would be something like I don't know. Let's say the length is ten and the step is one. So length is ten. And the step is one. And those are floats actually. And it might be the key that. The k the k is like 
10.9 repeating or something and uh, this addition it actually gives me 11 so this uh, this expression would be true in that case or something something along those lines because I'm I, I am adding a float here so whatever error in the position here is gonna keep uh, keep accumulating until I reach the length so yeah yeah I can either make the step smaller or like just do something like uh, what I say is, okay, it's not a full step, it's like 90% of it. And that's gonna do the trick, uh, okay. It's still gonna let me pass the length, maybe it's gonna be a, a corner. I mean, I am going to introduce a corner case with this. Because if, if uh, the previous step, like K is, uh, I don't know. Um, Yeah, it's 9.9 .9 or something like that or 9.99 and that's that's actually its value i don't know why but that is that is its value then the next k is gonna be 10.99 and that's not gonna pass this this check but then again this value is almost almost the length Yeah, I'm not sure. I could change this this for loop, uh, and instead of having uh, this step or incrementing by step, I could have a for loop which uh, has indexes. And uh, at each step, I'm, I can uh, uh, multiply the step by the, by the index, and so I don't have that repeating uh, addition. It might help with the precision, maybe. So let's see what what would that look like so no so i need a var i have an a so i'm gonna call it j it's gonna be zero j is gonna be smaller than than what so i i, I would have to divide uh length by step And the J plus plus, and then in here we're gonna have our K, and the K it's gonna be um, uh, step times J. And this might help if that if that's the issue. This might help with. And I can also do do this. So instead of length, we're gonna we're gonna add a step in here. And this step times j. Uh, we want the minimum value of this and length. Or should we actually no? I mean, yeah, but uh, now we can divide by length here. And instead of doing this mean, we can do the clamp from 0 to 1. It's actually going to be our percent. Because we, we don't actually need a k value anywhere else from. So we need it here, but we don't need it anywhere else. Yes, yeah, so I, I think we should do this. I'm gonna cache. Uh, no, I'm not gonna cache that. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I might just do this. Oh, oh, we have the k value here. Case is larger than length, but that's. Oh, so we go beyond that but but yeah but next time it's not gonna pass this so so this shouldn't be necessary actually I don't know why I thought it it would be necessary in here 
Anyway, I'm gonna comment this. So that's the old version. We're gonna leave this. I'll try. So yeah, the game was playing in the background for like what five ten minutes, and we didn't get the, the error. Or yeah, I don't know. So we're gonna leave this code here. I'm gonna mark. Uh, I'm gonna mark this. Uh, this actually, we're gonna test it first. But if this still uh, if this still works, so let's try a module. Let's try a weird module. Uh, what's a weird module? Combine looks looks weird. So it has a lot of angles and stuff. So let's try to recalculate the cache. It did the job. I calculate the cache. It did the job again. So yeah, it still looks, uh, it still looks good. Actually, wait. Wait. Uh, yeah. So looking at this doesn't really help uh, because the 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 gizmo not use the cache actually because the cache is too accurate in some cases and uh, it be overkill to draw. from the cache so let's save this actually and let's try to make uh, let's try to make a tower and see if uh, it works correctly okay so here we have a we have a combined module so let's, let's watch the enemies uh, go through this it looked good this part also okay so the, the cache is calculated correctly that's what uh, yeah that's that's perfect yeah, I've seen there's some weirdness here I don't know if it's the let's try to look into this I don't know why that why that is I don't know if it's yeah something is happening here let's look at the cache also so I do wait why do I see the cache now but the, but uh previously I didn't hmm Okay, so we have, this looks like a perfect value. Let's look at the last page. Oh, we have a 000 here. So we didn't cover all the, okay. Ah, there's another bug and I will have to fix this. Yeah, so I was thinking that I might um, this calculation for the length of the array might not always be correct. So I was thinking of um, yeah, after doing this for loop, actually shrinking the the cache array because we know, we know the length or or what length we need because we have this cache index. The, the the last value of the cache index is gonna be the actual length of the array and the, if they are different we should just recreate this array and move the values to it I mean recreate the array with the with the correct length so I might just do that because we sometimes do get this error where we have uh, the last value is not populated because of whatever happened in in the calculation. So this might not be a, a good solution because maybe there's a bug in here, or maybe there's a uh, there's a better way of calculating this uh, the length of the array. But um, yeah, I might just uh, yeah, I might just do it. Yeah, just fix it in here because sometimes I don't know if you can see it on stream, but sometimes some some objects flash, and that's because you can see here it just goes it goes to the origin for a frame and just goes back to the to the to the path because of that value. So yeah, that's that's gonna be a problem in the future. Yeah, so let's try to do that. Let's um, so let's put the cache array length, and if it's different uh, with one equal is if it's different from cache index. Uh, 
new cache array. It's gonna be a new vector three, vector three of length. Actually, no, of length cache index. And I wonder if I can just pass in the cache array. I can't. Um, Oh, I can do this. Yeah, I'll have to do a, a for for loop. Yeah, a for loop. E, uh, so this is cache index. Let's make this a var. And uh, new cache array of i equals to cache array of i. So now we just copy the values. Cache array is going to be new cache array. Yeah, so basically we just fix that uh, fix that error in case it happens. I may just throw an, um, a warning in here. Yeah, let's just throw a warning in here. Um, Yeah. So in case this happens a lot, as I said, um, yeah, we might look further into it, but this is just like a temporary fix. It's gonna work for now. So what was the module? So the straight one, right? I think this is the module that had the issue. And we're gonna check all the modules actually, just to be sure. Um, yeah, so this is it. So let's try to recalculate the cache. Actually, I... I would have loved to see how many items there were. So let's try to, why can't I right click? I wish I could, but I'm sure I was able to right click before. Okay, anyway, let's discard the changes. And let's put the path again. So we have, so we have 201 um, items. Something definitely changed. I'm no, I don't know if it did. But it might be with this. Yeah, so if I recalculate the, the cache now, we get a, a better value here. So we get the, the full 20 in here. So yeah, we might have actually fixed the, the error that we have previously with this, or actually with this. Because as you can see, we didn't, we, we weren't reaching the, the last, uh, the last point before. Yeah, but I'm still gonna I'm gonna keep this this code for future reference in case the the bug actually reappears. Wait a second. So I got an error. <laughs> we actually got an error, but this is like super random because it tells us it's it's a it's an error in this commented code, which is not correct. God damn it! I I didn't saw that. I wonder when when that happened. Very distance. Let's try to see if we can determine where, where this uh, error came. from. So it sure came from evaluate, which is internal evaluate v2. Okay, so this might have been wrong I might just cap this to index so it doesn't go it doesn't go beyond the index but actually yeah I'm I think I'm going to do a clamp here just to be sure cuz if the percent goes I mean it shouldn't go above 
or below yeah above one or below zero but yeah let's do that let's do a clamp from zero to to what to kings or actually i can do easier thing so i can uh, clamp this to zero one I, yeah, yeah, clamp this to zero one, multiply it by length and floor to int that. Yeah, wait. Oh, yeah, this is not an actual length, like a, like a distance. This is the, the size of the cache. Yeah. Mm hmm. Oh yeah, but that's true because we have. Hmm, interesting. So we have if the percent is one, multiply that by multiplying that by length, it's gonna give us uh, actual length, which is not correct. It's, it it won't be an index of this. So that yeah, that's actually a problem. So actually, this is not length. Uh, this is length minus one. And we're gonna keep this uh, this clamp. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. This is this was a this was an error. Cool, but it's not the error we were looking for. Cause it's not. It's not the same. Uh, it's not the same stack trace. But for sure, that was an error that that happened. Okay. Okay. So going back to this. Uh, what I was doing. Okay. So this was fixed. I guess. Let's let's save this. And let's look at all the all the other modules and see if they have the same uh, the same problem. This looks to be fine. Let's uh, look at the uh, the other path. Uh, it would be so cool to go to the last one instantly. I can no, I can't write in. Never mind. Let's look at the others too. I could just. Um, yeah, so this has the issue, recalculate it, now we get a full path. I could just recal recalculate everything, but um, yeah. I'll just look at Helix. God damn it, this has 27 pages. I'm gonna kill my mouse. Okay, so yeah, this recalculate the cache. Fine, I guess this has the same issue. Let's recalculate it as well. Let's save this helix. Let's look at combine. Or we were on combine just. No, no, we weren't on combine. We did something else on combine. This looks fine. Let's look at this. This looks fine as well. Let's look at 180. God damn it! So many, so many points in the cache. Yeah, this is the issue. So I'm assuming the 180 reverse is the same issue too. Let's just check. I mean, it doesn't matter because I can save this prefab again. But yeah. Okay, so we solved those modules. Um. Yeah, I think we're done. Uh, one thing that I want to do, actually, I'm going to leave a comment next to this comment code. Uh, um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay, so we're gonna leave it like that, and um, yeah, I'm gonna commit this. 
should have dragged this in progress. Ah, it doesn't matter. Okay, so, so let's commit this and... Uh, oh my god. This took 40 minutes? Jesus. I don't know when 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 40 minutes passed. I don't know. Actually, let's um, let's try it again just to be safe that it still works. Looks fine. And let's look at this. Co uh, no, the straight piece was the problem. Yeah, look how smooth it is. No more spawning uh, or moving to the to the origin. Nice. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, so we can commit this. So this is a fix. I pasted, okay. There's a fix for this bug, hopefully. Let's publish this and let's stop the timer. Exactly 40 minutes. Nice. 40 minutes on this bug. Let's close the task. Yeah, now let's look at the, the, the issue we had with the composite plane yeah I don't have uh, uh, a lot of uh, information ah, actually I forgot to to change this back to 10 actually no um, no let's leave it to 20 because it might uh, might help us uh, uh, trigger the error. Um, Faster, or at least see the, if the errors still is there. So, so there are the items. So I'm looking for something that has. There's none within 21 items. Let's try this again. So we did have the error previously, when we expanded the tower. Maybe that. There we go. 21 items. I'm not crazy. Hmm. Yeah, so the the bug happens, but I'm and there are no errors. So uh, let's actually take this one too. So there are no errors, but I'm not sure why why it happens. So, oh my God, there are. I mean, I know there are. There's way actually. There's way too many patterns here. No, something weird is happening. So there can't be so many paths, can there? I know it. I know it goes exponentially with each module. If the module splits, it's gonna explode. That's why it's not. Uh, I don't want to do uh, high numbers for the for the tower when it expands. I tried with 100 two, uh, two seconds ago, I think. Yeah, I had to 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 kill Unity when it reached like I don't know it was 10, 15 gigs of uh, of RAM, and you, it was frozen. The, the editor was frozen. So yeah, let's see if we can. Um, so yeah, let's pause this so it doesn't continue to spawn enemies. So what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna move each module. So I'm I'm thinking maybe there is a um, there is a mod that spawns twice. Could be. And that's uh, that's what's causing the the problem. So by moving them, if I move a module and we and we see another one that's uh, that's in the same place, uh, we know that's the issue. If that's not the issue though. I'm not actually sure what to look at. I mean, I know what to look at because I have to look at this uh, AC, async code that we added last time. Let's move them in the other direction because we don't have a lot of space left. No. No, du no duplicate module. Yikes. I wish that was the the, the, the thing. But that's not actually the problem. 
but this explosion actually I, 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 I might try to, I'm gonna count those uh, those uh, modules and try to make uh, yeah let, let's undo everything because it will be easier to to see what I'm gonna do next so I want to know if uh, the number of uh, composite splines is actually correct so First of all, let's see how many there are. It should be, theoretically, it should be a power of two. Number of them. Okay, so there are 64 uh, splines, which does make sense. So let's see. Um, so we have. Uh, I'm gonna count the the split modules because because uh, the split modules are those that uh, cause the yeah the path to split. So we have one, two, um, three, four, five, six. And I'm sure that's what we're gonna get. Yeah, so it's 64 to the two to the six is 64. Yeah, so the number of composite splines is correct. What is not correct is the the number of splines in the in each composite spline. There is one that is uh, there. It's one that is not. Uh, Not one, the first one. So the first one is twice in the, hmm. is it the same for, uh, for every, yeah. Yeah, so this is the first module. So those, uh, Composite planes for some reason have this uh, this first modules uh, this first module twice in there. Okay. Yeah, at least I know what to look at now. Uh, let's switch this back to ten, so I don't forget again. Yeah, so we have to look the uh, actually not composite planes because. Not the composite plane is the issue. The, uh, the the tower builder is the issue, because that's what uh, generates the the composite plane. Yeah. So let's start. Okay. So we have this build method, and this is the build method that yeah. So on load, this is what happens. Let's look. So we're gonna expand. Expand is gonna generate modules, but that's not actually generating modules is just setting them in the in the list with actually spawn them right so we have to look at power because this is where yeah so here or from here this is where the the magic happens with the with the composite spline Yeah, so I think we're gonna start with this. So we're gonna we're gonna uh, put a breakpoint here, and just look how many results we get. Because we might just get um, 21 results, and that would be weird if we get 21 results. So yeah, that's what what we're gonna look at. We're still in debug mode. Yeah, we're still attached. Yeah, yeah let's try this. Okay, I got hit. 
let's look at the length of the results there are there are 10 results which okay so so we're not gonna stop in stop here so so the length is 10 but let's see how the yeah so we, we still can in here okay because it it might be that we have results in here but the composite spline has 11 uh, items in it so let's try it again Still 10 results, uh, let's uh, continue, and this has 10 items. Okay, let's try it again. Yeah, because I don't know what, what triggers this, we're gonna be here for a bit until I manage to... Hmm, actually I might do, I might do, um... I think I'm gonna add another, not here. Can I add it? Um, I might add it here. In case we, we actually get the, or trigger the error. Um, we're not gonna see it in the editor, we're still gonna have a breakpoint after this whole thing is Okay. Okay, let's actually let's go back to 20 models because uh, that's where we reproduced it earlier, so we might have uh, a better chance of reproducing it again with 20 modules. Come on. Okay, let's see the results. We have 20 modules. Let's look at one just one spline and see yeah, it has 20 splines. yeah and just confirm that that's it yeah 20 items yes yeah, this, this might be a bit boring i mean it's boring for because i have to look at this and just hope that i get the I triggered error. Actually, something is interesting because, as you can see right now, we have uh, not a lot of splines. We have eight splines, but but uh, when we triggered the error, error earlier, we had uh, 64 splines. So this might be something. Maybe the, the error happens when you have a lot of uh, split modules. So I might try to use the number of modules or. Uh, modules that the, the system knows of and just uh, I might just leave the, the split and the combined module yeah I think I'm gonna do that yeah yeah I think that might increase the chance of reproducing this bug so we don't need the straight piece we don't need 180 combine that we need we split, uh, split we need and those we don't need so now we only know about the combine and the split. So we're gonna have, yeah, the composite splines uh, number is gonna explode. Actually, actually I'm gonna do a smaller tower because now we have 20, which means uh, half of the modules will be, will be split nodes, which will make us have uh, uh, 124 composite splines, which is awful. So let's put it at 12. So we get, uh, yeah, six split modules, which will lead to 64, uh, yeah, 64 composite splines. Yeah, let's try this. Okay, we're here. We have 12 tower modules. And we uh, let's look at the splines. We have 64 splines. That's exactly what we wanted to see and we have 12 items in the splines, which is correct, but it's not what we are after. This looks so weird. <laughs> I mean, it, it, look, it looks boring because it doesn't, yeah. 
Yeah, it looks boring. Let's try it again. I hope I'm gonna, I'm gonna... I mean, I'm gonna catch this bug. I'm sure of it, but... But if it's a problem of timing or something... I might not... I might not be able to catch bug because I'm uh, I'm pausing the, the 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 program basically. Yeah, so still not good. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna try it again. So so yeah, that looks good. Let's go to the next breakpoint. This. I'm, I'm, I'm quite confident this is gonna look good. Yeah, so it has 12. So let's try something else. Let's um, let's stop the breakpoints and let's try it without the breakpoints and see if it breaks now. Because yeah, if it is a problem of timing, somehow. No, still 12 modules. So weird. This is definitely weird. I mean, maybe maybe not split module is the problem, because I thought maybe the, the split module is the problem because it uh, just makes uh, a lot of uh, composite splines, but uh, maybe another module is, uh, is at fault here, because I can, yeah, 12 modules, yeah, I might not be able to reproduce it. I'll we're back to, to having all the modules and just try it then. And maybe bigger tower? Maybe. I'll think about it. Okay, now when I need it, it's not reproducing, so that's kind of stupid. This is kind of stupid. Okay. Um, yeah, so let's go back, let's go back to having all modules, so let's uh, uh, collaborate, revert to this, and get all the modules back, that's it. Let's make this tower size 20 again, because that's when we trigger the error. Let's play and see if it happens now 20 items not good i might just do a yeah actually i can do a composite uh another what a, a conditional breakpoint yeah i think i'm gonna do that I don't have to really check this. So let's look at the tower splines. Let's look at the first one. Let's look at the splines length and if it's 20. God damn it. Or like not 21. Let's see if it's more than 20. Just break there. Yeah, so now now we're gonna get the we're gonna stop there in case uh, the 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 error reproduces and we just got it. That was fast. Yeah, twenty lines. How many modules do we have? Twenty modules. Okay, that is actually so good. So we have a root. Yeah, we're gonna look at this data for quite a while. Yeah, this might take this might take a bit. Um.
Okay. This is straight, this is straight, also straight, also straight. We got a 180. And now we got a split. Wait, no, this is not a split. Ah, no, so, okay, no, this is a reverse and from this, yeah. From this we got a split because this is this is gonna be a sp from split, yeah. Let's make this even bigger. So this is the path two from split, and this is the path one from split. Yeah. Yeah. What I have to do actually now is compare uh, the modules in here with the or the splines in here with the with the modules that we got so you know the, the the modules in here are in the correct order so we have three straight pieces 180 and 180 reverse which is correct it says 20 modules in here which is which is nice and i have this hmm, how should i do this because I'd like to have them, I know how to do it, so, but I'll have to have it a bit of screen. So we're going to do this. I'm going to take a screenshot of this. A screenshot that I don't get. There we go, so I have a screenshot. And I can make this bigger. Can I zoom in? Okay, so so now I can look at the the root and just compare uh, the splines that I see with um, with the with the module. So we straight clone. I'm gonna can I just do? I'm gonna do it like this. Or so I'm gonna mark all the ah, but when I click away, it resets this. Okay. I'm not gonna look there then. I'm gonna look in here, and I'm gonna use my keyboard because it's easier. So we got another straight piece and another straight piece, and then another straight piece. Okay, so there are three three straight pieces here, but we actually have four straight pieces. Okay, so there is this straight piece. The second one, the third one, this is the fourth one, and it's gonna be the 180. We know it's gonna come after, yeah. So, the 180, okay. So, so somehow in the tree, we got the first, or I presume it's the first, the first uh, module twice. I'm not sure how. Oh, could it be this maybe? Okay, so let's see what what happens, what happens here. So don't forget about the CDs. What CDs? <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, I haven't seen that. Yeah, yeah, you got me. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Okay. Yeah, so let's see what happens here. So, I, th I think I might, I might have to not do this when we are when we are adding the the root. But let's see. So, what does this function do? So generate three roots. So we gave it a module. We're gonna get all the imports, and for each import, yeah, we're, for each import, um, 
for each import, for each spline for each import. Yeah, we're gonna do a spline tree. So basically, yeah, that's gonna be the the, the root. So this is correct. What what not be correct is the other function, as I said. So so what what is this doing? So we give him the roots, we give him the module that we want to we wanna add, and yeah, we try to get all the leaves. And in the first iteration, all the leaves, yeah, will be actually the, the roots. Good, yeah, so get leaves says, go through all the roots. If there are no children, I am the leaf. If there are children, get the leaves from the children. And this is, yeah, this is a um, recursive function. Hmm. Okay. And then I go through all the leaves. I go through all the Ports or the splines for the imports. What is this uh, D angle? Ah, uh, so I match the. Oh, I go through all the imports of the module. Yeah, 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 that makes sense. And I match the. I match an import for the module with the. With a with an ending for the spline, so yeah, so I get the the last weight point for the spline, and this spline is from the import. Yeah, so I try to match them. That's what this delta angle is, and if they're close enough, I'm gonna consider them to be uh, continuous. Yeah, so leaf if children is null, which it will be. I don't know why I did. Actually, it, it might not be because I might add multiple uh, paths to this. No, this is actually correct. So if if it if it is null, we're gonna do this. Then we're gonna add the spline or another spline tree. Yeah. Yeah. So I think the problem is that um, whatever whether do we add this? So here we should do. Uh, we should add the module to the roots if it's not, if the module is not actually the, the root module. But now, now this is weird because now I understand why, why, why I get 21 in here, but I don't know why it works sometimes. Why I get the, why I get the, 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 the right value. This might fix it, but I don't know what's gonna happen with the other, because now we we might get uh, composite splines with um, with uh, nineteen uh, nineteen splines in them. Okay, we're gonna see. Hmm. I wonder. I wonder something. Um. I'm gonna look a bit at this, but I'm. Uh, I wonder if we have uh, any data in the tower. No. So this is zero. Okay. So that's that's okay. So that. Was not triggered. We have 20 items in here, which is correct. So now I, I might just change this to be if it's different from 20. So we can catch if we have any 90, 19. Any length of 19. Or whatever. Something else different from, from 20. So we're going to do a couple of runs of this and see what happens. Oh, 
I thought we had a hit, but it's uh, is another breakpoint. This seems to work, which is both good and weird. Actually, I saw an error. I mean, not an error, but I, I, I might have saw an actual bug. I know why, why we had the bug when we expanded the tower, when, or when we expand the tower. This error. I think I know why it happens. But we're gonna come back to that. I'm gonna try, I don't know, three, four more times. And if the bug doesn't reproduce, I'm gonna consider it done. Okay. This seems to work now. Consistent day, I mean. Okay. Okay, so this bug is actually done. Let's remove the the break. Okay. Uh. So okay. So so I I said that I saw another issue. Um. Yeah. So so in this for for loop, we're iterating through all the results that we get. And then, um, yeah, we get the result and then we either add it to the, we mark it as root or uh, uh, mark it as, uh, yeah, add it to the, to the roots or the, whatever, to the leaves. Uh, this if is not correct. It's correct for the first time when the spawn module is actually zero, but it's not going to be correct uh, afterwards. So when we get the tower, this spawn modules, it's gonna be 20, for example, in this, after we, because it's gonna be 20 because we're, we're spawning 20 modules right now. And, um, ah, uh, shit, I, I, yeah, so here. So this, this if is not gonna, uh, it's not gonna work ever. It's not gonna, not gonna be true when we expand the tower. So now I wonder if we should uh, say that this is zero. I mean, if it if it's the first in the in the for loop, or I don't remember why I did this uh, like this. No, I I wanna. If it's the last module that has been spawned, or the next one from the from the last from the previous time, but it doesn't work well with this uh, with this force. So I might just I might just compare it to zero. If it's if it's zero, I'm just gonna consider it's I'm gonna consider it as. Otherwise, I'm gonna add the module to to all these. Okay, let's try this. So it shouldn't break anything for the first time, but now if we say I'm going to add another, let's try with a small number of modules. So let's add 20, the two modules. There we go. So no errors. We got the 180 reverse and a straight piece. 
let's try it again we got a split in a in a parallel module we got a helix and another parallel module yeah so it works now now we got to combine in a straight piece and then a 180 180 reverse yeah so now it works okay so we fixed another bug which is actually cool okay so let's stop the timer for this because we've actually finished it 35 minutes that's that's fair given the fact that we we solved more bugs than we initially planned for okay collaborate let's see actually what, what have we changed let's uh, review the code a bit we haven't changed quite a lot actually <laughs> let's look at everything so we've yeah so we've changed this uh, zero in here and then we've added uh, the module only yeah if, if the module is actually the root we don't add it to two leaves but the leaves are gonna be it's gonna be the actual root so yeah small fix uh, so fix uh, and this let's publish it okay fix another another one uh, next what do we have oh so we, so I have I seen a to do I've seen a to do in a in this file in the uh, no, actually not this file the um, the composite splines there was a to do yeah here and I haven't had time to look into it I, I I said I should use the last waypoint but I don't know why I haven't Let's look at the last waypoint. Maybe we so last waypoint. Ah, okay. Okay, I see. So what I'm basically trying to say is no. What does this uh wait? Evaluate distance. So I give it a distance. What is this actually? So we have the composite spline, we give it a distance and we want the position uh, based on the distance. Okay, we go through all the splines. If the distance is bigger than the Total length of the spline. Yeah, and we do this until we get the Okay, that doesn't make a lot of sense to be honest. I don't know why I said to use the last waypoint. Because I actually need the position so I, I would have to calculate it. Let me get Okay, it's back here. It's like I could get the last the last waypoint instead of doing this uh, evaluate of one. But no, actually this is uh this is okay because this uh, this evaluate function uses the cat. So yeah, maybe it made sense before when we when I. I wasn't using the the cache when I had this method because this was doing um, yeah it, it was doing some calculations in here, but now with the cache, I don't have to 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 worry about it because I'm just gonna get the position basically for free because it's not doing a lot. So you know, what a subtraction or multiplication is just like nothing. And then we in the cache and add the, the root position, which is again almost nothing. 
almost. It is something because we add two two vector trees here, but it's not that bad. Yeah, so I I'm not gonna change this actually. So I'm just gonna remove the to do. Let's see if we have uh, to do's in here. So cache this plane. Okay, yeah, this I'm not gonna do this. I know what that is. And there are some, but this is an S framework, so we're not gonna look into it. Yeah, those those are not important right now. Okay. So we finished this task too. Four minutes for doing actually nothing. Let me, yeah, we're gonna commit this change. So this is a fix. It's not a fix. I haven't changed shit. I just remove the to do because it doesn't make sense anymore. Okay, now we're gonna do. Yeah, so I have this task. So last time we did. Uh... Actually, let me show you that first. So last time we did this. Uh, we did this uh, game speed manager, which is just uh, yeah, a scriptable object that holds the holds the speed of the game. So it knows if it's on normal or on fast. And uh, yeah, what I want to do now is be able to control this from game. So I'm going to add two buttons on the screen that's going to set the value of this. And probably I'm going to I'm going to use it in the dummy enemy, dummy enemy and just make him go faster if we select fast. So yeah, let's let's try to do this. And this is not going to be like the final version of anything is just gonna be for debug purposes so I'm just gonna add two ugly buttons on the screen that's it so let's make a uh, yeah let's just add it with a button sure why not let's make this bigger have a, an ugly button there um, so Normal speed. Let me make this button a little bit bigger. Let's say like 200 pixels. Yeah. And just attach it to the the corner. Uh, I have to change the pivot, but I don't know exactly how. I mean, uh, I don't know the, what this should I put. Uh, so I want X to be zero. I think this is gonna be one. Yeah. Uh, no, that's not the one I wanted to change. This one I wanted to change to this one. Uh, this is zero. My bad. So and this is one. Yeah. And then we can put it in the in the corner of the screen. Uh, let's add some padding. This is twenty. This is I think minus twenty. Yeah. And on click, we're gonna get our game speed manager. And I'm sure we don't have any functions, yeah. So let's try to do that. Let's add some uh, helper methods in there. And, oh, I forgot. I was supposed to do some, uh, some restructuring with the folder in here, but uh, yeah, I haven't done that. I should do that. So I said this to be public, but I guess I can't change it from there. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna add a, Helper function so public void uh, set speed uh, game speed speed let's try it like this it, it might not like this also 
because you might not know what to do with the enum, but uh, doesn't know what to do with the enum as a parameter. So I'm gonna do I'm just gonna do a function speed. So set normal speed and normal, and this is fast set fast speed so we can yeah now now we're gonna appear in the yeah there we go so this is normal speed let's duplicate this let's call this fast speed let's change the text also without the enter okay and we change we're gonna change the the method it calls and let's move it because they're on top of the other so this is 20 we made it 20 so like 40 maybe yeah this looks this looks good and let's just see if if they work for now we're gonna look at the, at the object and see if the the value change in here so let's call on fast let's call, click on normal um, Right, this doesn't work and I think I know why I think this event system is wait um I mean this should work but it doesn't work I don't get it Wait, I'm uh, I'm confused. Why it doesn't work? I mean, it should work. Or maybe the the the, the inspector is not being updated. So let's click on fast. Yeah, I have to click in the inspector to see the the thing change or something. Yeah, so it's on normal or it's not on normal. What? Yeah, it's on fast now. Let's click on normal. Yeah, so it, it, it does change, but I have to... Yeah, so it does change, but it's just being uh, updated weirdly. I think I have to do something... Um... No, there was a thing I had to do and say that I want to update it. Uh... I don't remember how that went. So the problem is the the showing inspector um, attribute doesn't update this value in inspector um, each uh, on each update. It just updates it sometime. But there was a way of uh, of overriding this and saying that no, I want to update this every every time the the, the panel is updated. But I don't know, I don't remember how that, uh, how I can achieve that. But yeah, it's good for now, because what I'm going to do now is hook this um, game into the, into the dummy enemy. And just multiply the speed. Yeah, so let's do a pri private uh, game speed manager. Speed manager field and we're gonna use this when where do we have the speed so this is the speed actually no I'm gonna multiply this by we're gonna do a conditional here so if this speed is normal we're gonna have one other we're gonna have a two in there well, let's make something more obvious that's like it's not like like five five times the speed and now let's not forget to assign the the thing here so we have a ref uh, have the reference and now 
Uh, let's um, yeah, let's just play it. I don't know if it's on fast or normal at the moment, but we're gonna find out soon. So now normal, and if you click on fast, they go crazy. But now we click on normal, then they go slow. Then we click on fast, and they go crazy. Yeah. Nice. That's actually nice. Also, now we have a way to control the speed of the game. Well, we have. Some, yeah, we're not gonna have in the end those dummy enemies, but. We can we can control it and that's exactly what I wanted to do. So uh, yeah. Actually, so I said that I'm done, but I actually I want to change something. So yeah, I don't like. Uh, yeah, this is not a, a good thing to have this hard coded here. Let me get OBS back. Okay. And. Um, yeah, I think I might want to have this value saved in here. It's not gonna be public. It's gonna this is gonna be a private float. Uh, a fast speed multiplier, sure. And it's gonna be like. By default, it's gonna be two. It's gonna be a serialized field. What have I done? Yeah. And let's do it like this. If speed is normal, we're gonna return a one. Otherwise, we're gonna return this multiplier. So now. Instead of doing this check here, we can just get a speed multiplier. And then when we go back to the game, and we actually have to, I mean, we set it to two, but let's make sure, yeah, it's, so it's two. Now let's put some space there, because it looks to, uh, not in dummy. In here, let's add some space. Yeah, yeah, that's better. Okay, so let's try it now. Let's see if it if it still works. I mean, it should work. Okay, so we have this. Let's put it on on fast, so it it is a bit faster. Let's try to increase this and now it's it goes like crazy. But then we can click on normal and they all just go slowly and then we can click on fast and they just go like crazy. Okay, let's do some more things in here. So let's put a, a mean value of one. Uh, max, let's add a max value also though. I'm sure it's necessary so max of 10 so you can go above 10 and the two times increasing speed it's it's uh that's okay and yeah let's put it let's do two by default or like three so it's more of for testing but yeah play this Fast. Yeah, then another, another a bit faster. Slow it down. Yeah, actually, now that I think about it, there's another place where we'll have to use this. In the in the spot, because we have a timer here. Yeah, here. So we have this timer that spawns. So actually, this we have a, a timer that spawns the enemies. 
I'll have to also make this uh, go faster. Um, yeah. So let's do the thing not. Uh, let's go to dummy enemy. Let's copy this. Set it here to this. And then when we send the delta time, let's multiply this by the speed multiplier. And now the the spawner should keep up with the yeah with the with the increased uh, speed. Dummy spawner. Let's yeah. Let's try it now. Yeah. So now the the enemies should come should come faster. There should be any any uh, uh, large gaps between them. Fast. Yeah. So the gap is the same. If it goes slow, the the gaps are the same length as when we go fast. Yeah. And now the they are coming back from up top. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So now we're done with this task. Okay. I'm pleased with it. Let's see what has changed. So we changed something in the enemy in the spawner, which is correct. We added this in the prefab. Yes. We changed the playground and then, uh, yeah, that's so, yeah, everything seems to be okay. So let's do this. Let's publish, publish those changes. Okay. Hmm. What should we do next? Actually, doesn't the enemy definition need a link to? Um, let me check something. Ah, I don't have a mind map. I mean, I could I could show you what I've done here. So. Um, um, I don't see this. Yeah. Let's look at my uh, my planning thingy. And I want to look at uh, the enemy definition. So yeah, I'm gonna need a component. Yeah. So yeah, what I was uh, um, looking at is the enemy definition needs um, 44 needs a dependency in here because I can't do it without this, and we're gonna talk about that. But first, uh, I don't know if I want to do the controls manager right now because we'll have to do some research. I might just uh, do it uh, later or stream. So let's just put it way down here, and we're gonna yeah we're gonna stay in the land of uh, of game UI and do tower health indicator. But this has a dependency uh, on this uh, other task, this first one. So yeah, as I as I said uh, um, previously. Uh, I mean, at the beginning of the stream, we we added this uh, localization package, which is the, the standard package from from Unity. So um, come on, yeah. So I, I don't see it, but it's there. Yeah. So this is one. This is the one. So this is the this is the localization package made uh, made by Unity. It is still in pre, but it should come out. Um, Probably with, uh, with uh, 2021.2 or .3, I don't know. But it's good enough for now. I mean, uh, yeah, they're in. Uh, yeah, the, is the. It's almost the, the latest or the or the first version of it, first uh, production ready version. So yeah, we're, I think we're we're gonna just uh, roll with it. 
and uh, yeah um yeah so let's go to the Peppa playground actually um so last time we we made a, a component for the health of the tower which is this component this health data, which has a health and a max health and uh, one thing that i've added that but i haven't used yet is this uh, health ui um which what it's gonna be used for is uh, uh gonna link this the the value that we have in here with the actual ui through a variable um, a variable being a, a, a variable from ES framework so we're gonna do that right now. So we have UI, let's make another variable in here. So let's go to ESF variables and we're gonna make an integer. Actually, I'm not sure. Is it an integer or, or is it a float? I don't know what I've done here. Okay, so it's a float. So let's do a float. So variables, uh, float, uh, tower, And we're gonna do one for max health. We're gonna need that also because we will have to have this for the UI, and we'll have to add this to the to the health data. And now we're gonna assign this. Yeah. So now, what what this is gonna do? Let's uh, so let's look at the tower health. So now it has a value of zero. you can't change this value. This is runtime only. Let's play the game. And it should change, maybe. No, so it doesn't update at the at the beginning, but it should. I'm gonna do that actually now. But uh, yeah, if we go to the tower and uh, actually do a properties of this, so we have it here. So if we go to the health component, let's say we take damage. The value is gonna be updated to match the the actual data in the in the health component. So 40 here, 40 here. And um, yeah, this variable is gonna be added to somewhere in the, um, how do you call it? Um, yeah, it's gonna be added somewhere in the UI it's, or it's gonna be used in the UI. So we wanna link those to this health component from the tower with, with the UI somehow. And that's that's how we to do it with a, with a variable. So it so it's not uh, it's not a hard uh, a hard link yeah. like if for some reason I don't have the tower the the UI is not gonna freak out or the other way because th this variable is always gonna exist so you can either write the values to it but no one's listening no one's gonna write to it but you can also you can listen to the change. And just uh, yeah, if no one's gonna set a new value, you're never gonna know, but you're still gonna be able to to, to listen for it. Yeah, we have a, I have a little debug thing here where I can see how the value changed to time. So where it came from and what actually changed. So it changed from zero to forty. And now we're gonna uh, we're gonna do two things so one problem was that uh, at, the, at the beginning the the value was not uh, set to to what it's in the in the in the in the data component so we, it should have uh, 50 as the default um, or, or it should write the value in the variable and also we need uh, we need another field here for the max health so let's do that let's go to wherever I put this, which is somewhere, but I don't know where. Yeah, I definitely have to components that put it. Yeah, this doesn't make any sense. I'll have to do some some restructuring of the code. So first, let's do, let's do this max, uh, max at UI in here. Now we should have another field. Okay, so let's assign this like this. Cool. And now let's use it. So in the health data here, 
in the load phase actually sure why not let's do it in the load phase um actually can i do it in the load phase uh, i might not be able to do it in the load phase let's see um, let's look at the entity component and see where where does the data uh, uh, where is oh no I forgot yeah so uh, in um, yeah right now the, the the reference to the data is uh, is saved in the component so it's here as you can see uh, but in uh, the Equinox hunt where where I uh, where I made this uh, yes framework um, I was getting the data uh, at runtime, so uh, I always had to think uh, when I can do certain actions or where I can use the data because I was not sure uh, if the data was loaded or not. But now I have a, a direct reference to it, so I can do it in the load phase, no problem. Yeah, so let's look at the data. Let's look at health UI. Uh, not a variable, but the value is equal to d dot health and let's do the same for the max health okay so now uh, when we enter the game we should uh, receive or we should uh, see both the uh, both the values in here so let's do it like this so we still have the fourth last time so the value is not reset at uh, when it, when you exit the game or whatever exit play mode but it doesn't matter because it's gonna be reset, uh, or, or it's gonna be set by the code when you when you enter the game. So it doesn't matter. So yeah, we have 15 here and uh, 100 in the other one. And now we can take damage. When the value is updated, we can heal up. I don't know by 50 points. Also, it's gonna change in here and it's gonna match data in the data component, which is awesome. So that works. Now we have to do the actually thing that I want to do in this task, which is, uh, God damn it, I forgot to to, to track the time for this task. Shit. Um. Yeah, I can check when I when I started working on this. Uh, where is that? Where is that? Where is that? Twelve twenty-four. Let's add ten minutes. Okay. Yeah. So what I wanted to do to do with this. So um, let's um, let's add the, the the health. Let's try to add the health to the to the screen. So UI and I want the text mesh pro component health indicator or something. Let's attach it to the other corner. Let's just do some things in here. This is a 20, this is a minus 20. So we have the text in here. Health something. Dot, dot, dot. And uh, this is whatever looks like and all. Uh, let's align it to the, I can't align to the right. I mean, I can, but I can't. To the, so uh, actually, let's see this. Huh. Oh, this has to be minus 20. My bad. Yeah, okay. And now we have to add that uh, magic function, which is uh, localize string event. Yeah. And let's assign it health, um, the health key from the table. And now we have set uh, to, to tell him how uh, how to update the text so text mesh and let's select the text from here so now it should do the same thing that uh, that we saw previously it's gonna say health uh, and uh, 50 out of 100 but this is uh, this is not correct so those values are hard coded uh, and uh, let's make this actually a bit bigger let's uh, say that it's 300 in width yeah so so the, those values are hard coded in the in the where is it variables group 
And what I want to do is uh, somehow link this group with the with the uh, with the variables that I made. So yeah, that's what we're gonna do right now. I don't have a, an actual plan of how, of how to write this. Not not sure how how I want to do this. So actually, first of all, yeah, I think I'm gonna do just. Uh, hmm. Actually, what should it be? Yeah, it could be a. Uh... Yeah, let's do something like this. It's gonna be a behavior. Um, we want the float uh, variable, which is health, or no, let's call it tower health. Oh, that's stupid. And tower max health, and let's make both of those. Oh, come on, stupid keyboard. Let's make those uh, serialized fields. And on a week. Tower hell that adds. Wait, what? I should be able to over oh, re register listener. I should change this to add listener. Add listener, remove listener. Yeah. Yeah, so add the listener whenever the value is. Ch uh, actually, do I get a new value? No, I don't. I have to get it myself, which is not a problem. So I do this. And oh no, I need this global variables group. Something like this. It's also serialized field. And yeah, unfortunately I have to do it with strings, which is not cool. Um, values keys. Can I just assign it? to health dot value uh let's do it to string maybe no it doesn't let me because yeah it's not the same thing but i may i thought maybe the cannot convert that string to i global variable okay so let's look at the documentation to see how we can do this Localization, that's what I need. Actually, this is not view this version, yeah. So, reference uh, scripting, I guess, maybe. Um, no, actually, this is not what I want. No, so I need something with variables, but I don't remember what I, oh, I saw that. Extensions, no. It might be in, uh, yeah, it might be here. Not my own extension, that's not what I want. I want very main features. Global variables. Okay, so I wanna know how to set those variables from code. That's what I need. Triggering updates, yeah. Okay, so I don't need a reference to that. Okay, then it's in the string database, smart formatter, get source extension. Source global my float as float global variable, okay. So, 
Yeah, I I can I. Yeah. Hmm. That's what I have to do apparently, and I think I'm gonna do this uh, here. I don't know how to call it, but uh, this is go uh, this is going to be a uh, string global variable. Actually, let's call it uh, health var. Or something. Health for that value equals yeah, that's that's it. Health for that value equals store health dot uh, value dot to string. And he doesn't like to string. Why is that? Ah, I want to do that. Um, no, I should. Uh, let's just kill Steam. Uh, let me see something. I I I think those are not uh, that that should be a float in the in the global variables. That's a float. that's not a string if I'm not mistaken. What in it? Oh, it's an integer. Okay, I should make it a, a float. I'm gonna change it to a float. But here I'm gonna do it float because I know it's gonna be a float. Let's remove this to string because it's stupid. And let's see what why what this is. Yeah, so possibly null. No, it's not going to be null because I know it's going to work. Let's try it like this. You're not going to complain right now. Cool. And we have to do the same for the max health. Let's give it an, another name. Max health var. Let's duplicate this. So this is the max health. We're looking at max health here. And we're also listening to the max health in here. Okay. Yeah. Now let's change those uh, those values from integer to to floats. Okay. Um. Max health. Let's remove those two. So yeah, health and max health. Okay, now it's spelled correct. Let's make that uh, that uh, that manager. Game. I don't know if this is gonna stay like this. Uh, I mean, uh, being a um, a mono behavior. But for now, it's it's okay. So we want the tower health. This is the max health and we want this global variable group so let's try it if we look at this let's make a this properties from this let's put it here so now if i play i should get uh, the values in here and i do which is awesome and now if i take damage let's say 10 damage there you go the string has been updated in the in the game. Nice. Okay, so this works. This is actually this is actually connected to the UI, which is amazing. So I might, um, yeah. So so one thing that you might think about it is, yeah. So so you can set the value. You can get the the health component or whatever you can set it in uh, you can set it in the health component instead of putting putting it in a variable and doing all these shenanigans so yeah i i, I could put it directly in this uh, global variables group but the thing is i might use this uh, these variables for or this variable for for other things not uh, not just text or or, or things like that so I might, uh, yeah, I may need that uh, that value for for yeah, yeah for 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 other things. So uh, having it uh, as a variable in the in the health component uh, helps me link it to, to other systems. Because yeah, right now it's a, it's a number, but uh, maybe I'm gonna 
I'm gonna want to to have a, a like a like a health bar, and then I'm gonna I'm not gonna need this global variables group. Or maybe I'm gonna need it because I I, I might have a, a, the, the 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 health bar and on top of it uh, also say it with numbers. So I might need both both the progress bar or the health bar and the and the and the values. So. Yeah, it just uh, makes it easier is, uh, having variables here or using variables in general. Uh, it helps uh, decouple things first of all and uh, makes uh, things uh, uh, reusable. Because yeah, I can use this uh, tower health uh, wherever now. Because I, ha I mean, I have the value and now I can I can just uh, use it wherever I uh, wherever I want. Yeah, and also another thing is because this uh, because I need the um, um, strings to access uh, to access uh, values in the group. It's gonna help having all those. Uh, uh, yeah, accessing uh, accessing this. Uh, it's gonna help having them in one place. So if I change the, this health, for example, I put something here or whatever. I, I mean, I change the name or something. Um, it would be easy to just come to this to this uh, to this file and change it here, and not uh, worry that it might be in some other place in the code. Because this is for so this is for UI only, and uh, uh, mo actually more like uh, this. Uh, this number only, and uh, anywhere else in the, in the code, I I will use the variable, so I don't care about this uh, this string in here. So yeah, if sometime I I decide to instead of calling it health, I might and I probably will do that. I might call it tour health. Just come here and I know come here, change it, and I know that uh, this is the only place where I used it. Yeah. Okay. So this is also done. So we have this. Uh, we have the tower data in the Y. We have this uh, awesome thing with the speed of the of the game. Yeah. Well, we're getting somewhere. Let's uh, stop this uh, timer. So 16 minutes, 26 minutes for this. Yeah, that's, I guess that's fair. And actually this, yeah, so I've also done the UI. So this is like two, two tasks in one because I have them separated. So, so this, uh, this, this uh, class that transfers the data from, from the variable to, to the localization system is one task and uh, actually showing it on the screen is it, it was another so i'm just gonna come on um actually without this yeah actually let's get uh, let's get this and let's commit the changes. What have we changed? We have the, the health component, the health data, this new file that we've made, those uh, two variables, and we changed something in the group. Yeah, this and the and the and the scene. Yeah, that that looks fine. So this is one feature, and let's get the other two. Um, our health indicator. Yeah, let's publish this. Cool. And from here on out, um, yeah, we're gonna do some uh, some data modeling. 
yeah but uh, but first take a, a short break so i'm gonna be back in like two minutes something like that okay uh, be right back Okay, I'm back. Okay, so let's the next task is 
yeah so as i said uh we're gonna use data modeling for different things in the game like the enemies the waves the upgrades and um yeah one thing that's gonna um yeah link everything together <laughs> it's gonna be this uh this dummy component or well, it's not actually a component it's a scriptable object so yeah as i said here it uh, it will be used to link different definitions and usages in the game it places the need for hard coding strings in the code permits the creation of definitions for a specific stat yeah so basically uh, let let's take the the enemy definition and let's look at this because it's easier to see where do we have the enemies it's here somewhere yeah so we have the enemies and we have uh, yeah this enemy definition that uh, that i said about and it's gonna have a name i mean the, the name of the enemy and the the stats uh, that's gonna have which are defined up here so it's gonna have health it's gonna have strength, speed, and some of them uh, is gonna have uh, special stats. Uh, for example, the, the healer type. Uh, yeah, it's gonna have a heal rate. So for each of these stats, we're gonna have this uh, link. Uh, yeah, we're gonna have a link for each of them. Um, maybe more, actually not more for uh, for enemies. Now that I think about it, because. Uh, we, we won't uh, change the stats uh, for the enemies uh, yeah actually this was a bad example um, yeah a better example I think is um, yeah let's say the tower so so we're gonna have upgrades for for different parts of the game and let's say for the tower we're gonna have more health so how do how does the well, let's say when the game starts so i want to know i'm the tower and i want to know how how, uh, how much health do i have and so i i'm gonna have a base health let's say 100 but uh, i have to know if there are any upgrades that's that's gonna increase my my health so to link uh yeah to 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 get uh, to get the answer for that we're gonna have this uh, this uh, link script below that's gonna that's gonna be both on the tower, or the t I mean, the tower is gonna know about it, and it's also gonna be in uh, in this uh, in the um, uh, upgrade uh, definition file. So each each of these upgrades is gonna have a uh, a file or an asset that's gonna specify what the stat is modified and how it is modified and how many levels uh, there are for each upgrade and things like that. And with this uh, this component, you will have uh, yeah you you will be able to to link uh, to link uh, uh, a specific stat with uh, with its with its upgrades. So you can know you can ask uh, it's gonna be there's gonna be a uh, where is it an upgrades manager, and you're you're gonna ask the updates manager or upgrades manager whatever. Um, Okay, so I have this uh, this link to, to a stat. To give me all the all the upgrades and uh, all, all the upgrades for it, or all the upgrades that I bought. So I know how to yeah. Give me all the multipliers or whatever you have there, so I can know the real health or the real value of the stat. Yeah, as I said previously, or in the description, of the task is gonna uh, yeah. We won't we won't have uh, so we so we, we don't we won't have uh, hard coded strings in the code or yeah links like okay I have a reference to the to the upgrades manager and in each component I know exactly what to get from it because maybe one thing that that we might do is uh, what is it? so now we have for example we, we now we only have one uh, one stat for health. But maybe we're gonna have, or, or not one stat, but one uh, one upgrade for the health. Maybe we're gonna have multiple upgrades for the health. That's gonna be somehow different. And uh, yeah, we I wanna have a yeah have, I wanna have a link between the, the the upgrades and the and a specific 
uh, stat and uh, yeah not uh, have to think about okay i've added a new upgrade let's go to the health prefab and just add it there so it so the the tower knows about it i just have to have this uh this link between them uh, and uh, that would happen just uh, automatically without me doing anything just adding the upgrade and the, the system knows what uh, how to deal with it Yeah, so, let's see. Actually, yeah, uh, given the example, uh, this uh, this dependency is not actually correct because enemies won't need the, this link because they, they, they won't depend on the, on the upgrades. Only the upgrades will need the, will need the link. The wave definition, it uh, waits for the enemy definition. So what should we do? Should we start with the enemies or should we start with the upgrades? I think we're gonna start... I mean we have the tower. So we might just work with the tower. Yeah, I think we're gonna do the, the enemies uh, afterwards. Yeah, so let's do it like... We're gonna start with this link component, which is like basically nothing. Then we're gonna start uh, def uh, defining uh, how upgrades work. And we're gonna do this... Uh, Upgrade definitions manager that holds all the upgrades and you can ask him stuff about the upgrades And then we're gonna do some modeling on the, on the enemies and the waves Yeah, okay, so that's that's what that's how we're gonna do stuff. I mean it is gonna be the order Hmm Could we change the music? I wonder I mean We've listened for like what three hours. Let's let's do something else. Even though I I like a veg as well, let's try something else. Let's try ah yeah yeah let's let's do this. So we're gonna listen to some uh, three doors down. Yeah, cool. Okay, so let's start with this link uh, with this component. Good. And now, the hard question, where do I put this link component? Because it doesn't have a place where I could put it. I definitely have to do some uh, restructuring in here. This editor for this, like, what the hell is he doing here? Doesn't make any sense. Let's just delete it, because we don't need it. Yeah. Yeah, let's put it in the utils. Makes sense to be here. Yeah, um, actually, I'm gonna just do. I'm gonna do the task now. And, um, I mean, I'm not gonna do it now, but I'll just make the task so I know, know I can do it. Um, uh, structure code. Yeah, we're gonna put it in the backlog because I'm gonna take it. Uh, I, I might take it for next week. Estimated. Uh, I don't have a cost uh, for this. Um, let's do some uh, something, something, something. Um, let's do one of my favorite colors. He didn't save that. Stupid. Yeah, that's it. Oh, this looks like shit. Uh, let's try... Yeah. Okay, so... Let's see the backlog. And of course, it's not responding. On hack and plan. Yeah, so we have it here. I'm gonna take it... Uh, probably And restructure all the code, but for now... Yeah, let's continue with the... With the link component. Let's get OBS back in here. Yeah, so it's gonna be link. It's gonna be a scriptable object and create Oh yeah, and now I remembered about something. So 
menu name project tower slash link this class is gonna hold nothing or yeah it's gonna hold nothing I was thinking maybe I should a um a field for a description so um but i can show this let's uh i don't think i have events in here yeah let's make an event uh, for testing purposes so so for events in yes framework um no wait i'm confused oh i think i've removed that latest version yeah so we had uh, we had a field for actually for variables. I th I'm not sure if we actually it was for events, but we had a field in in here that uh, you could write into. So it was like uh, a field for 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 us uh, developers like notes for each uh, for each variable or event. So we know uh, so we know where it's used. So you put something in there and uh, yeah. Basically, write a description of uh, why that variable or event exists and what is used. So I was thinking of, of doing the same with the link, but um, yeah, it's it later. I, I'm not sure if it's gonna be necessary because you'll be able to you you might be able to just guess what what it does from the from the name of it. So. So yeah, let's try um with a link. And yeah, this is something I have to change. The and I'm going to change it right now cuz I'm going to get advice. Let's go to the game speed manager and just remove this space in here so that we have everything under the same uh, under the same uh, sub menu yeah there we go i might move those you know managers tab and those in a tower tab why do we have tower data <gasps> this uh, i know that what it is let's change that also because yeah i'm gonna forget so this should be global tower data and let's put it in tower. So it's tower slash global tower data. And we also have tower module data. So let's put this in tower two. Tower slash. Let's add some spaces in here. And we have those modules. Or not modules, uh, those managers. So let's do manager. There was another one and I forgot about it. It was. Ah, the game speed manager, yeah. Yeah, let's do it like this. It's gonna be um, yeah, a bit more structured. Create project tower, and yeah, we have towers, tower stuff, manager stuff, and then we have the link. So let's create the link, and let's say is um, uh, tower health stat. So what this is, what we're gonna use this uh, for is um, for the health component of the tower. We're gonna, yeah, we're gonna use it to know, um, yeah, if we ha if we have any upgrades for for the health. But that's gonna come a little bit later. But for now, this this is what we'll have. And one thing that I want to do is add another attribute in here and say hide monoscript. So, so the, the script disappears. There we go. Now it's a little bit cleaner. Cool. Yeah, so this is actually the task and we're going to go to uh, 8 minutes. Yeah, 
I've uh, changed uh, quite some things in here. So let's do this and let's do a chore. Um, Uh, change not some yeah change structure in create projectile yeah okay so now with this component done uh, we can start working on the upgrade definition asset and let's see let's see what we have here so uh, there's no description but I think I've uh, wrote more things in here wait uh, what it was the upgrade definition. Okay. So this is the upgrade definition asset. Actually, I haven't wrote many things in here. So we'll have to to think about what does an upgrade need actually. Yeah. We'll have to do some thinking in here. Okay, so what does an upgrade need? So for sure it's going to need a name. It will need to have a... I mean, this is for way later in the... In the... Uh, in the yeah, development process, but it's going to need an icon. I'm not sure how... I think it, this might be a asset like we did with the module and it's gonna need a link in a link to the whatever he's upgrading so the name an icon a link um, we will have so we'll have upgrades that uh, you can upgrade uh, upgrade indefinitely so there are uh, an infinite uh, number of levels you can upgrade. Uh, there will be an uh, other, and there will be other upgrades that won't be won't be infinite. Um, so yeah, so we're gonna need a is infinite. Um, it's gonna be a bool, and. Um, yeah some we're gonna define some levels and let's see um for each level i think we're have a let's let's see it has a name oh uh, now i have a huh that's gonna be interesting so okay so we'll have a name we will need a uh let me think Yeah, I'll have a name, I'll have a multiplier. And actually that's it, maybe? I think that's it. We might need, after all of those, we might need a description. Also for the UI. And I think that's all we need. That's all the data that we'll, that we'll need for for, a, for an upgrade definition asset. Or at least that's all I can think about right now. And what I was um, I realized earlier is this name somehow will have to be localized. Yeah, so we'll have to to see how we can um, link uh, an uh, an entry from the table from or from a table to yeah so we can so, yeah so we can select it in here because we won't be able to just write i mean you can we can just write the the, the key from the table or something or uh, yeah i don't know but i don't want to do that i want to have um, 
a nice uh, where do we have that health indicator inspector I want to have something similar with this this uh, string reference so I can select exactly what I want from here. but uh, I don't know how to do that yet but uh, we'll see we can look at this uh, this uh, file and just uh, see what what they used in here see if we can use it uh, in other places but anyway okay so we have this and I, I okay so this is this is what we need uh, have I started the timer yeah I started the timer in here so that's cool are we definition yes yeah so we're gonna start with this we are gonna start with this so let's make a folder I guess man this is no let's do it in the game yeah this is a mess I had such a such a good organization in uh, in the Equinox Sun when I started I mean it still has a, a, a nice organization in the code but I don't know I don't know why 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 it's why it's why everything is so scattered in here I have to think of a uh, of how to structure this code but for now yeah it's just gonna, it's gonna jump so yeah so so we have upgrades and uh, we want a upgrade definition and it's gonna be a scriptable object and yeah scriptable object let's do that hide more first let's do that create asset menu menu name project power slash upgrade slash definition yeah let's start copying those those values into into the class so first we have the name uh, let me get the the music will be done for me okay so let's just do it um no how do we do this yeah let's do for now a private string which is the name but in this actually it's a specialized field We'll have a name, we'll have an asset reference. Asset reference sprite, what is this? Where does this come from? It's still from addressables? Yeah, it's still from addressables. I wonder what this is. Oh, asset reference T of type sprite. Sprite only asset reference. That's nice. Actually, that's nice. That's exactly what I want. I want a sprite. So that's an icon. I want also a string. It's gonna be a description. I want a link. So this is gonna be a link. And get that from whatever it is. I will need a bool. A uh, bool which is uh, is infinite. And we'll have a list of stuff or an array of stuff, um, which I don't know. Uh, so we're gonna need a, a public struct. Um, or, uh, yeah, public struct. Um, upgrade level. Upgrade level, just just like this section. So I'll have an array of those. It's gonna be, they're gonna be called levels. And this is system dot serializable. And this is gonna have a um, this has a public. It's gonna have a name, and it's gonna have a, a multiplier, which is gonna be a float, and this will have a mean value of. Actually, 
should it have a mean value? Yes, it should have a mean value. Uh, but a mean value of zero. Uh, we we don't need the negative values. What do we? No, we don't need negative values. We need either values that are greater than one or less than one, but never negative. Okay, so this is the structure that we need. So this is everything that we've set in here. Now let's see. Let's make a um, let's make a folder in here. Create a folder upgrades uh, project tower upgrades upgrade definition tower health upgrade definition. So yeah, this is how it looks right now. Name yeah. icon description the link which we do have it's a tower health stat. uh if it's infinite or not and the levels that's awesome now let's look into the into the name and description and see what uh, what data type we can use to have that uh, that fancy uh, selector so let's First, try by seeing the see if we can edit the script in here, and we can localize. This is not what we want. We want something from here. Actually, can I? Uh, oh, or maybe it is what I want. Actually, let's try it. Let's uh, let's get this. And in our upgrade definition, instead of saying string, let's say it's a localized string. And let's import the the namespace. Let's see what it does. That's it. That's that's the one. Just select something for now. Then you have the whole unit that we had previously. That's nice. And you have the same thing here. Nice. Let's add a new entry. Can we change the name? Yeah, we can change the name of the entry. Uh, tower Health Upgrade. Okay. I don't know what this is. Uh, preview arguments. Arguments to pass to the string front These are for preview purposes are not stored. Okay, I don't know what this is. This is like some advanced stuff. Um, let's do some fancy in here. Our health viața pur nului. I don't know, something like this. Let's save it. So we have the values here for description. I don't care right now. Yeah, so all I care is that I can select whatever I need from here. So I can I can have these strings uh, localized. That's the most important thing. And one other thing that I want to look at is do I can I change this? So I'll have some somewhere in the UI I'm gonna have a this component, this localized string event. And yes, I yeah, yeah, so I can set it. Reference is this, yeah, whatever. So I can see it from the outside and it's gonna do do his stuff in there which is awesome cool so we'll be able to get this uh, name or whatever this is in here and just set it in the ui and it's gonna do its job and that is actually amazing i mean i wasn't expecting not to find stuff like this in here but 
yeah this will work let's um let me get obs back in here okay so yeah obviously this looks like shit so we have to we have to make this look a little bit prettier um let's try to add an icon a default icon so so we can have something to work with um and we have nothing let's just make a a textures folder let's make a ui folder and let's uh, let me get some uh, let me get a, a an icon in here that we can use um let's get something i don't know well, let's get something from uh, the Equinox Hunt maybe because I know we have asset here so project uh, textures yeah let's get a, an achievement or something is there something that looks like health or a tower not even one thing yeah Whatever. Let's just get this uh, this cool, cool icon that I like, which is which is this is one of the achievements from the Equinox Hunt. I'm not gonna say much about it, but it's one one of them. Uh, yeah, apply whatever. Actually, no, no. Let's uh, make it legit. I don't want sprite shape. Uh, transparency and all of that is going to be a bit smaller. Yeah. Okay, we can go back to our upgrade. And now, theoretically, I can. No, I have to make that an addressable. So, this is an addressable. That's the path for it. So, now I can choose it. What is this? Huh. I don't think this is correct. It shouldn't be here. Or I, I shouldn't be able to see this. Yeah, I think it's a problem with their code. I might use the the simple asset reference in here just because of that. Because it doesn't have that problem. Maybe it has the same problem. Let's see. I mean, it looks like it. So let's say I want nothing and I'm gonna select this. Oh yeah, it has the same problem. Okay, so I can yeah, just get it back to sprite. Okay, uh let's see if I can put it in debug mode and see what that is. Not sure what that is. Actually let's add something to it so Some object name, sub object type. Okay. Yeah, so basically, okay, so it wants to know the type and the. But it's weird that I have to choose it. I mean, first of all, it, it, it's the only option. Yeah, anyway, there are bugs everywhere, so. Whatever. Yeah, so we have the name, which can be localized. We have this icon, which, we can, which is uh, unaddressable, so it, it won't be loaded into memory when we load this definition into, into memory. We have this link. We have this bool with is infinite and a list of levels. Let's look at the... At the how does this look? It looks so basic. So, so basic. Oh, yeah, this name also has to be localized. Yeah. So let's do that. And now that I think about it, yeah. 
I was thinking of putting those two on the same uh, on the same line, but this might not work out now that it's uh, in this localized field. But let's see. Come on, compile Unity. Oh, click. It wasn't actually compiling. Stupid. Okay. So let's select something. Let's select this. Yeah, let, let's try to see how it looks if we put them on the same level. So let's do this. A. Uh, let's make it be a horizontal group. Ah, god damn it. Yeah, like this. Let's see what it does. Because it, it might look good right now. Actually, it doesn't. But it might look like shit when I... Yeah, yeah. this, this is what I was thinking about. It's going to look weird when we expand this. I mean, we shouldn't need to expand this, but... Yeah, yeah so no horizontal group for this. But we're gonna do some uh, some cool cool stuff in here, maybe. Maybe let's just separate things a little bit. Uh, actually, yeah, I made move this. Um, so the name and the description are gonna be one after the other. We're gonna have the icon. I'm gonna put a space. After the link, and I'm gonna put another space in here. Yeah. It would be interesting when when this uh, is infinite check is uh, is checked uh, to see how uh, to see a couple of the next levels uh, being calculated. Yeah, I'll have to do that. But right now I don't know how to calculate. I don't know how how we're gonna deal with uh, infinite levels. We're gonna somehow deduce the next value based on the so so. So when you have this set to is infinite, you'll still have to you will still have to add the the levels here or a couple of levels. Let's say the first uh, five or ten. In the next uh, the next uh, the next levels are gonna be calculated based on the multiplier of those. So yeah. But I don't know how that's gonna play out. And now another thing that I think about is this um yeah the fact that the name has to be localized. Actually I think we're not gonna save the name in here. Or maybe we could save the name in here. Hmm. So yeah, with the name in the in, in each in each of the levels, I was thinking maybe we'll have upgrades that have uh, special names, maybe. And um, and yeah, we will we'll need a, a different uh, localized name for for each of them, or a different yeah, not necessarily a localized, but yeah, a different name for each of them. And yeah, with this infinite uh, with this infinite thing. We will need at least one one uh, level name that is uh, generic that can be used for for all of them. So I may have to add uh, if this is checked. I may have to add. Uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna do that. Let's see. This is infinite. 
private localized string um, generic um, level name. Gonna be a serialized field. Actually, let's put a space here, and I'm gonna show if name of cut limit name of this. So if this is checked, if is infinite is checked, I'm gonna show this in the UI. Otherwise, I'm not gonna show it. Yeah. So like this. I wonder if the required component works with uh, with arrays. I would like for it to check if it's. Uh, I mean, I can do it custom, but if it doesn't have any values, I would like for it. Yeah, it doesn't work because it it needs to have a value. So. Yeah, I'll add. Um, I will add. Uh, Validation for each of those uh, for each of, the, of those fields. I mean, I can easily add for for the link right now because this is actually simple with required, but the others need to have. Uh, yeah, link is required. The others have to have to have some custom uh, validators, so I'm gonna do that later. Or should I do it later? Mm. Can I can I put a, a default value of one in here? I can't because this is a struct. I'm gonna make this a class, just because I want to have a, a default value of one in here. It makes so much more sense to have a one in there. We don't have a cap in there, but you have a cap at zero. I might just not have a, uh, the mean value to be zero. I'm gonna have it be a, a small value, but never zero. I mean, it's a multiplier. We're gonna multiply a number with it, but uh, I don't think we'll ever hit zero in my brick stuff. I might be prone to... Mm. Yeah, no, I'm gonna leave it at zero. I mean, I'm, I'm gonna leave the, the mean value at zero. And we have, if, if we have any problems with it, we're gonna deal with that then. Okay, but yeah, so this is yeah, this is what we. This is what we need. Actually, it's not actually all we need. We need to add some public. Um, some public fields for accessing those. Those private fields, so we can get the values. I don't, want, I don't want spaces between those. Those are uh, those look good together. Actually, let's let's just duplicate the line. It might be easier to do it like this. Uh, this is a public. Definitely want the link. Ah, uh, this looks like shit because it has the name as the class. But whatever. Oh, uh, yeah. Actually, I have those, so this is a link. This is the icon. That's the description. Yeah, that's right. Uh, semicolon there and remove this. Is infinite. We need this to. Yeah. 
in here this generic level name we need uh, pub actually this, we might need this in the uh, on the outside but because uh, we, we might add uh, functions to this uh, upgrade definition file that uh, gets us uh, uh, like the next level if you, if it's uh, if it's an infinite uh, if it's an infinite one so you might not need this but yeah Okay, and levels. But it's going to be public. And also the levels. I might keep, the, keep it like this. I might make methods of getting those and uh, get them based on an index or something. Because we actually. We don't need them. Uh, we won't iterate over the levels on the outside because, yeah, we want that actually. So uh, I might I might change those. Or, uh, I mean, remove them. But we'll see. We'll when we're gonna use them in the in the UI. Because for now we're not using them anymore. But I know that we're, that we're gonna need. Okay, so this still works. This looks like it's working. Yeah. I have the link. It's infinite. Uh, actually, I may call this... Um, actually, I remove that. Because link, the link by itself, it doesn't mean much. But uh, yeah, if I put stat in front, it might uh, make it a bit more obvious what what we need from that. But why don't we get the the new name? Uh, the file might not have been saved. Yeah, I have to save it. Okay, stat link. Awesome. Now, now let's remove this attribute because we don't need it, and also this. Awesome. Um, yeah, so I was thinking right now, we're, we're going to have a manager that holds all the data. I mean, all the, it's going to have a list of uh, all those upgrade definition assets. And then this is going to be the, the component we're going to ask for, uh, for information. Um, this might not be actually a manager. I might change the name of this. Um, so this is gonna uh, this is gonna be a mono behavior, and actually it might be actually an entity. So so we're gonna need a way of storing um, what upgrades the the user has made, and which level they are they are and whatever. And, uh, yeah, so we're gonna have to to save that uh, that uh, in the save file. 
So this might be the place to do it. And yeah, as I said, this might not be an upgrades manager. Um, Yeah, I don't know, something like this. I don't know what what is what we're gonna call this. But anyway, whatever this is called, so so we want to save all the upgrades that the user has made. So we will need a way of actually, yeah, writing in the save file um, at level what upgrade. Uh, yeah, the, the uh, basically right the, uh, the upgrade and uh, the the level of the upgrade. And I was thinking, uh, I think we need to add a GUID to this uh, upgrade definition asset, so that we can link it in the in the file. Because yeah, of course we can't have a reference. We can have a reference at runtime, but uh, when we save it uh, in the file, we can't have a we can't have the reference. I think I'm gonna do a GUID. So add the GUID in here, and yeah, I I could do it based on the name, but that might be. I mean, that would make it so, or that would break a save file if. Uh, if we decide to change the name of the, of the asset in the project so so i i would like to have uh, something else here that uh, describes or identifies the this definition asset yeah so what i was thinking now is i want something similar to what we have in the um, in the entities so in the entities we have this uh, yeah for each entity for the entity root we have this GYD and it has whatever this thing in here so uh, I want something similar to this and I can and I I can use the same component. So if you look at the at this uh, entity root, if we edit the script, um, where is it? So it's here. It it's a it's a field of type entity D. But that's exactly what I was thinking about. I don't want it. It doesn't have anything to do with ID or what with entity, not ID. So either. I, I think I, I'm just gonna use it like this and uh, I'm gonna make a, a task in the framework and change uh, or extract this entity ID from here and uh, make it generic so it, it can be used with uh, things other than entities I mean it can be used right now but the, but the name doesn't suggest that so so I am gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna use it as is right now so in the upgrade definition, we're going to have a private entity ID, which is going to be the GUID. It's going to be a serializable field or serialized field. Let's import whatever we need. Um, I don't want a, a fixed name. I don't want to fix it. Consistent naming disable this because it's actually. I think I did the same thing in uh, in the entity root. I just named it uh, GUID with uh, yeah yeah. So whatever. Okay, so we have a GUID. And we're actually gonna take some things from here. So, yeah. 
we want this. Actually, let's get all of this, and we only need uh, two of those. So we want this to be called GYD with capital letters. We want it to be read only, and we want to display it as a string. So let's see how it looks like. And we will need to add some space here, and more than we have between the other properties. Let's do 20, 20 pixels between the GUID and the name. We'll just leave some space in there. Okay. Uh, not empty, but new. Yeah, so 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 he's uh, throwing arrows because uh, he doesn't have a, a value for this. So let's try just for the for the sake of it. Let's try to make another um, upgrade. If not the script, man. Oh, God damn it! I don't want that. Uh, let's go to OBS back in here. Come on. Yeah, so I want a upgrade definition yeah so now it has the GUID as it should and it's not throwing errors nice but now my concern is because i wrote here that it's uh like an uh, I, I i get a new entity id i wonder if it's uh going to change but yeah i think we're gonna yeah i don't think it's gonna be an issue because unit is only going to get this new value if it doesn't have a value, so we should be fine. So let's delete this uh, this thing. Actually, let's copy the name because we want to do the same in here. So yeah, let's put the link in here, name description, whatever. Let's add this icon. Why not let's click this even though I don't know what that is? And yeah, so now we have a GID, and now we can uh, basically have a reference between this uh, definition asset and whatever we're gonna store in the in the C file. And yeah, let's uh, let me make uh, the task in uh, ES framework to okay. So or no? Let's see. Yeah. Something like this, or whatever. I don't know. But yeah, this is gonna be. Yeah, it's gonna be urgent, sure. Because I'm gonna put this in the next uh, in the next update for for ES framework. Okay, so so we have that GUID. We have all the data that we need for uh, for for um, for an upgrade. Name description, an icon for UI. You have this link with the the, the actual stats. So whoever needs this uh, upgrade data uh, can can look for it. You know if it's infinite or, or not, and if we have infinite, we have this generic level name. Hmm, I might do something else here. Instead of having this generic level name, I might add to each level. So, so I would I would remove by default this name, and I would have a, a check a checkbox uh, called uh, custom name. So that might be better. 
in, in case you want, you really want a generic or, or a, another generic, uh, a custom name, you can add it only when you want it. Uh, otherwise, you, the, the generic one is going to be used. So let's do that because that, that actually makes a lot more sense. Okay, so we're, we're going to have this always. Let's rename this to level name. Yeah, do whatever you want to do. Uh, don't add that because I haven't saved that. Let's add a underscore in here. I may move this um, after the levels actually. And let's add space here. And let's remove this space in here. Let's see how this looks. Yeah. So we have level name, we have the level. And let's call this custom name. Public bool use custom name which is by default false. And we're only gonna show the custom name if this is checked. And I might add a space here. Yeah, so we have the custom name, we have the multiplier, and if we check this, we get this custom name. Let's do an indent on this so it looks so it looks better. There we go. Yeah, this looks nice. Actually, can I do space um let me see. So this is the, let's put some, the, pr the property space has that, um, yeah, I want space after, space after is uh, 8 pixels. So instead of having it on the multiplier, we're just going to have it on the custom name. So it separates the two a bit. When we don't need a custom, I, I might actually add. So we have the multiplier, have the custom name, and we. Okay. So it has space above but also below. Let's do like zero and eight. Let's see what that does. Cause I don't want space above. I want space below. Yeah. Okay. This is actually better. Okay, so this actually, I think that's everything that we need for, for this definition file. I mean, for now, we're going to add more to it when we actually start using it. Which is going to be, I don't know when that's going to come. Yeah. Hmm.
Okay, yeah, no, it, it's it's good for now. I was thinking about something. But, um, yeah, we'll see when we get there. Okay. Fifteen minutes. That's uh, very close to what I estimated. So I estimated one hour for this. Nice. So let's see. Just uh, this has been changed, yeah, because we've added that icon, some new folders, this new asset, some change in the in the localization table, and the asset. Yeah, this looks fine. Let's do feature this and publish it. Ah, come on! You know you can do it. Told ya. Okay, let's close this task. And let's look at the... The manager that's gonna hold all of this. Yeah. And I think this is gonna uh, this is gonna be the last thing that we're gonna do for, for today. Even though I had planned the enemy definition asset and the and the wave one. Actually, we'll see. maybe. Hmm. Yeah, we'll see. Actually, um, yeah, I'm gonna take a short break and be back in like two minutes. Okay, I'm back. I just got myself some food. So depending on when the food comes, I might... Uh, yeah, I might do more after after the task, after this task. So... Okay, so we have, uh, we have this upgrade definition uh, asset and what we want now is a place where to store all the all those assets and um, a place where we can ask for yeah yeah when when we can ask about those upgrades basically so yeah so that would be this Yeah. Yeah. 
yeah yeah so i'm wondering how how we're gonna do how we're gonna store the data yeah so actually no let's, let's uh let me start a timer so i don't forget yeah so let's start let's start with this so i know for sure there's gonna be a list so in upgrades let's go here let's make a upgrades uh, let's call it upgrades manager because it's gonna do much more than uh, just holding the the list i i know it's gonna be a scriptable object or i want it to be a scriptable object but i'm gonna make it uh, actually a service So uh, I don't know if I explained it uh, in previous streams, but a service in it's a it's a class from um, from ES framework, and, and basically what it does, it doesn't do much, actually. It just has this reset function, but uh, it, uh, it it is a special class uh, uh, because you can uh, add some uh, um, you can implement some interfaces on it. For example, I own a scene loaded, and uh, this this uh, I need to implement a method like this, and this has to call the reset function. So now, just because I've added this um, this interface because it's a service. Um, let's do a let's do a login here without a message. Come on, let me import. And also we have to do that uh, that thing with uh, create asset menu. Uh, no, uh, menu name. Um, project tower slash up. Great slash okay so we do this actually I don't know why I have the code on this so yeah let me clear this upgrades upgrades manager so now I have the upgrade manager now if you look at the I have a, I have a special um, Vector for services. If I do refresh here, yeah, it just popped up in the in the list, so so the system knows about it. Yeah, so yes, yes, game upgrades upgrades menu, which is exactly this. So now what's gonna happen? Also, as you can see, it did it did um, set first. I don't know why it did that. Oh, because this this thing loaded. Actually, I think that's why it did that. It shouldn't do that at at runtime. Uh, I mean, at the uh, edit time, you should only do it at run. But anyway, that's not actually a problem. But what's gonna do if I play the game right now? We're gonna see that console log in the in the console. There you go. Upgrades manager reset. So, yeah. Um, basically, services in ES framework are a bit special because uh, when you implement those. Uh, uh, when you implement those specific uh, interfaces, stuff is gonna automatically happen, and there are a couple of uh, interfaces like this. So it's on scene loaded, which basically is uh, the first thing that loads. Uh, when a scene is appended, when you asynchronously load a scene and uh, append it to the ones that uh, or the ones that are actually loaded. And uh, another one is when the active scene is changed. And yeah, that basically explains it. And each of them are, I mean, that interfaces and we just want you to implement those methods. Uh, nothing, nothing crazy. And there's another system uh, in the back, which is this uh, uh, service manager that does, uh, that does all the heavy lifting and uh, Searches for services, 
and um, and calls the methods necessary. Yeah. So um, why do I want this to be a service? Is because um, in order in order to save the data in the save file. Uh, using uh, yes framework, we need to have an entity that holds it, like uh, like the tower is. So the tower is an entity because it has this entity root script, and then all the data inside of it, uh, like the tower data. I mean, tower data doesn't have any serialized uh, serializable data, but health data does. So in the general tab, we have health and max health. Those two values should be serialized and uh, saved in the save file, and then when the, when the game loads, uh, the, the the data is also loaded. So um, yeah, one of the same thing for for the upgrades, uh, where we have we have an entity that has a that has a data class, um, and it's just gonna hold the the GUID of the upgrade that we that we wanna do, and the the level that we the, that specific upgrade is at, and because of that, uh, whenever the the game loads, we'll have to um, we'll probably have to we'll, we'll have to search uh, for this for this entity um, or um, or create it if it doesn't exist, so that we we have the, the this place where we can store data. It might sound a bit complicated, but it's actually not. It's just that I, I'm not exactly sure how to do it. I mean, there are some things that I, I'm not clear on, but um, but yeah, this is gonna be fine. We'll have we'll have to do some some more things for for it to play nice with the with the safe system, but uh, but yeah, this is gonna be okay. So. Um actually there is something that I want to I want to look at Okay so this is only for updates so that's not what I want Yeah so on let's say on reset I want to I want to create a new object which has a name of um, something like this. This go object transform is going to be null. Oh, I can't set that. I have to not. I have to go transform set uh, set parent null. And uh, actually, that's it. It might be null by default, actually, but uh, yeah, just to be sure. So we're gonna make a new component, and actually, I'm gonna make this uh, be a prefab and uh, instantiate a prefab. But for now, just make a a dummy game object, and just just so we can see that it works, and uh, yeah, just have it as a proof of concept. So yeah, let's uh, actually I can just uh, untick the the debug logs because we don't need the we don't need those right now. So let's let's play the game, and now we should see a new. Yeah, here we go. Upgrades manager data. So this is the uh, the the object that we've we've made from from the service, and this is the the one that's gonna hold our data. Okay. Um, let's see. Yeah, but actually, uh, until we reach that point, um, we we actually have to. Yeah, let's get the the list of uh, the list of upgrades in here. So let's do a private upgrade definition array, which is gonna be called upgrades. Let's make this a serialized field so we can see it in the editor. And let's let's look at it. Let's select the manager. Here we go. So we have this. Now we can add 
we can add this. Cool. Oh, I just remember something, something totally unrelated. Uh, I have to have to set a reminder. Uh, let me set a reminder. It's it's uh, I just remember about the change that I want to do in uh, in ES framework. Let me make a reminder for myself for like tonight or something to make a task. Um, um how should i how should i write it so i so i know what i'm talking about so uh let's do some keywords delay helper uh, no no single tones set values from project settings yeah and just set it for like 8 pm yeah sure Okay. Okay, so we have a list of upgrades and uh Yeah. So we're gonna have some um no uh let's do that prefab let's let's uh, finish with this um so private key we're gonna have a game object which is gonna be uh data prefab also serialized field let's um actually i don't need to uh no i need it so we're gonna instantiate this and uh let's just do it at zero identity and the transform is null or the parent is null go dot name let's set the name to Upgrades manager data. I might just be able to do this in a single line actually. Um, because I'm not gonna do anything. Ah, no, I'm gonna do some uh, more things in here. Uh, oh, okay. Um, my, my food is on the way, gonna be here in like. What, 20 minutes? Cool. Okay, so we have this prefab. Let's make this prefab. Um, or, um, let's, let's actually, let's create it in here. I mean, I have to create it in here, actually. Upgrades, manager, and data. So it's gonna be entity root. Let's add a not a type GUID. I want a, a simple GUID. Regenerate GUID. There we go. We will need a components. Yeah. Let's reset the the position here. Okay. We're gonna have components. In components, we're gonna have importer which is the entity importer let's assign the root so this is used for um, for saving and loading the data and actually that no there's one other thing we need a um a children lock so so we can uh, yeah so so with the component uh, all the all the children components are locked so you can't uh, accidentally change something in here 
but I want to unlock it for now and I'm gonna add a uh, deduplicator actually yeah yeah let's let's have a deduplicator um so what uh deduplicator does i'm not sure if, if if we're gonna need it in this case but just be safe so we have uh those guids uh let me yeah let's let's do it let's do it like this so let's lock this so those are those are locked so uh, what the uh, duplicator does is, if I duplicate this object, it's gonna regenerate uh, the GUID, so they don't uh, they don't have the same GUID. That's all it does. I mean, this is not gonna happen in the game uh, because yeah, this this prefab will uh, will be spawned from code, so there should, there shouldn't be two uh, two game objects with this uh, of this type. What's the or the same entity twice. Well, just to be safe, I'm just gonna remove it and let's uh, let's see if it still works. So we should see this uh, upgrades manager data in here. And do here we go. And for now, uh, it's gonna be just an empty empty entity. Uh, it won't have any data, but we're we're gonna add some data uh, quite soon. Okay, so now. Okay, we have those reset things. We don't care about those. Let's just leave them at the end. Uh, let's let actually let's make a region. Um, let's put this in a region and just collapse that because we 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 don't need to to worry about that uh, right now. We don't need it right now. So okay, so we have upgrades. We have the data prefab. Uh, the first thing that we will need uh, from this upgrades manager is so I'm gonna have a public function and it's gonna return me a float, I guess. Yeah. Uh, not for link, for stat. Okay, so let's say well, uh, we are the tower component and we want to know uh, we have the base health of the tower and we know what should we multiply that health by um, the, yeah, to basically take the, the upgrades into consideration. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to, this function, we're going to pass in the, the stat link, which is basically um, where where have we done it? So this is the the tower health stat. We're gonna pass in this as the as the argument, and we're gonna return uh, the multiplier. Now, what is the multiplier? That's a good question. Um, so um, let's see. We're gonna look through all the upgrades. We're gonna do a sum. No. No, let's just select them. It's not gonna be a sum. It's gonna be, we're gonna have to multiply the value. So we're gonna go through all the upgrades. We're gonna select. Let's just call it def from definition. Actually, it's not a select, it's gonna be a where. Because first we have to see if def dot stat link equals to the uh, to this stat link, and then from each of these we're gonna select something. So from the definition, now now here is where we we will need this uh, the data component. So we'll have to look at uh, we're gonna look at the levels and get one of the levels, let's say for now, let's put it at zero. And then we're gonna get the multiplier. And then we're gonna do an aggregate and I forgot how this was supposed to work. So we start from one, uh, one F. Uh, so this is the
So we basically get all the multipliers. Uh, let's return here. Let's arrange this a bit better. So we have all the multipliers for for this stat link. D0 is not correct, but we look at the, the, the level we have for this current uh, multiplier. Oh, for the, uh, we look at the, the multiplier for the current level, sorry. Uh, okay, and then we take all those uh, multipliers and we multiply them together to get the the actual multiplier that then just return it, return the value. So now what we need to do is this. So for, um, yeah, we'll need to somehow get the level or get the, yeah. Yeah, no, get the multiplier from a, from a definition. So we will need the level at which this uh, this function is at. So let's make another function and um, let's make it public. So public int get level or upgrade. And this is going to be an upgrade definition. It's going to be diff. And uh, I don't know what we're going to get this. I mean, we're going to get this value, but I don't know from, from where. So, or should I, should we say uh, get level or get, uh, no, I think I'm going to say get multiplier. I don't know. No, we can get the level, but for sure we're going to need a multiplier, actually. So, let's see. Um, hmm. Yeah, let's, uh, we have to do that. Uh, we have to do that data component. Let's see where my food is at. Oh, I think it just right. Yup. Okay, so I'm back in three, four minutes.
Okay, I'm back. Okay, so we're gonna finish this. Uh, we're gonna finish the work on this uh, uh, upgrades manager, and uh, then I don't. Uh, then I'm gonna go to to it, and we'll see if I'm gonna continue the stream afterwards. Um, but first, let's get some. Let's change the music. But what should we do? What should we do? Let's just scroll like for a bit and just choose something. Um, yeah, sure, let's do Fozzy. I will listen to this in a, in a while. Okay, so where were, where were we? Yeah, so yeah, we need we need to make that uh, data component for the upgrades manager. Upgrades. Uh, no, it was cool. Upgrades manager data. Um. Actually, let's see. Yeah, we only need a data component. Yeah. Yeah, we can do it like this. So this is gonna be an entity data and the data and it's gonna be like this because we wanna serialize it. So public oh my god, public uh struct this and Serialize this. Okay. So we have this, and uh, let's see how how we're gonna save our data in here. But actually, what do we need? So we we will need a list. Well, it's more like actually we don't need a list. We kind of need a dictionary. Yeah, but that's not a problem. We can have a dictionary, and then um, yeah, when we serialize it, just transform it in a list maybe. Or should I do a list? Uh, no, 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 no. I we should make it as a dictionary because it's it's gonna be easier. I mean, it's gonna be more efficient to have a dictionary okay let's make a dictionary so we're gonna have a public dictionary and um, we're gonna have a dictionary from a upgrade definition to an int levels we're gonna call it levels uh, or upgrades level okay let's try to let's go actually no i have to comment this code so it can compile I have to implement those members, or actually not implement them, but just, uh, yeah, I have them here. I'll let you need to compile stuff, and now let's go here, and let's make uh, always manager data, and yeah, that's, I, I, I would like to see, to have this uh, um, dictionary. Oh, I think I know. Can I do show in inspector? This might be our my. This might be my my solution for this. I want Odin to to render the dictionary. I think it did it. Actually, it's it's null, but 
that's easily fixable so I can do a uh, new dictionary in here and it should have a value or actually no I think it's not gonna have value because you know, it's saved with that or, or maybe not okay so I can add stuff key cannot be null obviously value 5 and I can add nice okay so now I have, the, I have a dictionary with this this is awesome okay Yeah, now let's, um, okay, so we have, the, uh, can we do something interesting with this? Ah. Uh. Is it going to be read-only? No, it's not going to be read-only. Or is it going to be read-only? No, I would like to, to be able to change this. Actually, no, I might just keep this as read only actually, or at least for now. I love, I love it to be, I would love it to be read only in the editor, but uh, run time to be, uh, to be able to change stuff in it. So it's read only. What I'm wondering is, um, so Odin has a read-only thing. Okay, so you can't specify when it's read-only. Yeah, now we're gonna make it read-only all the time. And we're gonna deal with this, uh, with this later, when we actually need it. Because it, it, be, it be, uh, would be interesting to, to be able to change those values and test, uh, uh, yeah test with different uh, upgrades so you don't have to play all the game to get all the upgrades but uh, that can be done in other ways you we don't necessarily need this okay I'm gonna have a list of stuff just gonna have the same name and let's make data type so public um, public struct upgrade level this is also gonna be system uh, system that's serializable and let's just add it here and we kind of have a public uh, byte array, which is the GYD of the upgrade, and a public int, which is the level. Um, no, I need this. So let's uh, let's do serialization first. Let's see how we do this. So, yeah, so let's just re um, return new of this. Upgrade level is what is upgrade level? So, we're gonna take this, we're gonna get the keys, we are gonna get the, an enumerator. No, enumerator? No, I don't want an enumerator. No. Um, so I want the keys. Um, oh, I can use select. Oh, yeah. Okay, so that's good. So I want the select. So I get the key. And I want to return a 
um, whatever, let's just put key for now. Uh, I want this to be a list. So I'm gonna do a list again. This is gonna be a new upgrade level. GYD is gonna be I'm gonna be key.gyd and the level gonna be this of key dot no actually not dot that's because it's it is the actual level okay so we're gonna serialize the data and now for the deserialization or not necessarily deserialization but uh, getting the data from the the serialized object into the component yeah we'll need a, a special thing in here so yeah so let's see upgrade level is gonna be equal to serialized data dot this dot um, to dictionary and this has and this is gonna have to uh, it's gonna require two functions um let's just call it v from value or something v dot level is gonna be the the value and now we have v dot and it's not actually guid because we will have to transform this from a guid back to an upgrade definition asset so back in our upgrades manager or no let's f first, first 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 let's do something else here so so we have the dictionary and on top of this i want to add a public upgrades manager Uh, get um, upgrade definition from a byte array which is a GUID uh, ID What actually do I? No, that's that's how how I do it. So we have an ID, and I'm gonna return upgrades dot uh, uh, first. Yeah, first of um, def dot GUID equals DID. Value or the other value. Oh, never mind. This is the equals. Yeah. Is, uh... Oh, I can actually not make it a uh... oh, cool actually. I might just not make it an entity ID because I can do entity ID dot equals def dot GUID and GUID because an entity ID can be transformed into a yeah, it byte array magically. So I can use this uh, function directly, uh, which is not actually the functions that I, function that I want. Wait, I want this, which is equal not equals equal. It's private. I don't like that. I don't like that it's private. I mean. Yeah, let's make it public. But it's actually better in in this case, because I don't want this to be transformed in. I don't I don't, don't want to wrap it. 
I don't have any any reason to wrap it in a entity ID. So we're just gonna do it like this. We're gonna read the first one that we find. If we don't find any, we're just gonna throw an error. And that is actually fine to throw an error if you don't have an find an upgrade. Or or is it fine? No, let's deal with it. So upgrades first or default. Let's just first or default so we can return a null in case we don't find it. And in the data hmm. I might want to do a filter before this, but Let's see how can how can I do it? Yeah, I'm not. I don't think I can use this in an efficient. So let's do. Let's just do a new dictionary and just uh, simply iterate this. Uh, this. Um. If the definition is not null. gonna add definition and the level okay so now we have we see we can serialize the data when we can serialize it we save the upgrades level let's add a space there because I don't like how it looks like let's put it here ah god damn it I just want to add the space between those two. There we go. Much better. Now we can save this. We can go back. And let's go back to our upgrades manager. Okay, so we have this data prefab. Now I'm going to do a, a private um, upgrade. If, uh, Upgrades manager data. We're just gonna call it data. And now we're gonna go into this. Uh, let's move this actually, this get diff. Let's put it here. Or actually, let's put it for everything. We can transform it to express uh, expression body and. Get component. Always manager data. Yeah. Let's put a space there. Okay. Now, actually, I we haven't finished here, actually. So after everything, public int, um, get le uh, level for def add it here maybe i should no no let's add it on the no let's just do it directly in here manager yeah so we're just gonna uh... oh but i do have to expose that dictionary in here or no, I don't have to, because because it's public. Yeah, data dot upgrades level. Yeah. Um, if it contains key definition, we're gonna return this. Otherwise, zero. Yeah. 
public int get, get multiplier for upgrade. Uh, it's actually not the, and it's not actually int. It's gonna be a float. Okay, so we're gonna get level. If level is zero, we're gonna re uh, return one as the multiplier. Otherwise, we're gonna return thing. Actually, no. We know what to return. Levels of le uh, level level. Yeah. So we need this, and we can actually. Yeah, do it like this. This unfortunately won't work with uh, with infinite levels. If you have a an, an upgrade that has infinite levels, so we'll have to deal with that too. But for now, let's use this function in here. Instead of doing this, I can do this. So for each upgrade um, for this stat link. Get the multiplier and then do do the the same thing. Multiply all the multipliers and just return it. Now, uh, now, okay. So yeah, in the in the definition in the upgrade definition, we're gonna do some um, some helper methods. Public float get multiplier for lev. int level and um, for now we're just not gonna deal with uh, with the fact that that uh, that an upgrade can be infinite so what we're gonna do is level is gonna be math dot uh, the minimum of level or um levels dot length minus one and we're just gonna return levels of level dot Okay, so now instead of getting the the levels directly, we can do this, and it's on diff. Hmm. I wonder if I should just put this on. Uh... Um, if I should add this. In, in here too, if I say level zero, for it to just uh, return me one as the multiplier. Nah, I mean we'll see, but for now it's okay. Thing that I know, uh, I'm gonna remove this, so I, I'm not gonna need the levels on the outside. The level name I'm gonna need it. But the levels for sure I won't need it. So we're gonna have methods that are, that are gonna interact with this with the array. So this is yeah, this is one of them. Get multiplayer for stat. Now let's do something in here. So let's press a button. So now we can test this. Okay, let's play the game. Actually, I don't know if if we've done uh, the whole setup on the upgrades manager. Yeah, we've added the we've added the uh, the upgrade and we have the the prefab. Cool. So now we have this this 
and actually now it's it's uh, the moment where I don't need th I don't need this to be read only. I I need to be able to change the the level in here. So yeah. Uh, actually, um, yeah, I'll be back in a sec. Okay, I just have to put something in the fridge. Okay, so, um, yeah, okay, so we have this. So this is working. So now, let's look at our uh, our Avogadro manager, and let's uh, invoke the function with the uh, our, uh, our health stat, and we get a multiplier of one because we have zero levels in here. And actually, we would also get one if we let's put something else here. Let's put one point one point two. So one one point two, and let's get let's get back. Let's try it again. We we should still get a one. We do, but now if you get to the upgrades manager data, and we add a Let's say we are level one. Now, if we call this method, we should get a 1.2 instead of a one, and we do. So the method is working correctly. So, so we got a 1.2 because we are saying here that this upgrade is at level one, and the level one for this upgrade has a value of 1.2. Awesome. One thing that I want to change. I would like to see this data component in here, so I can so I can change it. So let's um, let's do that. Um, actually, let's do a couple of things. So um, I would like to uh, not hide. Um, hmm. Not hide. Or maybe hide is what I want. Whatever. Yeah, so I'm gonna hide that in in uh, in play mode. This as well, and I want this data. Uh, showing inspector. Ah, and I'm gonna do hide in uh, editor. Okay. And also, I want to do. Um, inline editor. That's what I'm looking for. And just do it like this. Okay, let's see. Let's see how this works. Okay, so this is how, how the upgrades manager looks when uh, when in editor, and when I press play, we should get another view here. There we go. So we have the data. Okay, I'm gonna. Let's do some uh, some changes in here. So here, let's say here hide in inline editors because I don't want to see. I don't want it. Uh, I don't want to see it in here. And let's change the look of this inline editor. So I don't want a full editor. Uh, draw a large editor preview without any. Uh, no, I want. Uh, Let 
let's try this let's see how this looks So we still got those and see how it looks when we run the game we get directly the upgrades levels that is awesome so now we get the tower health we get a multiplier of one but if i add a if i say okay i have a, a level of one now when i invoke i get a 1.2 that's exactly what i wanted That is exactly what I wanted. Okay, so. Yeah. Yeah, so, so. We will be able to get, uh, yeah, we'll get, we will be able to get multipliers for for any stat we, we just need a reference to the upgrades manager but there are a couple of things that I that, that I will have to change in here so uh, let's see well, let me think about this Actually, yeah, yeah. So let's try this. I wonder if it works. Let, let's try to save the game and see what happens. Actually, first of all, let's try to serialize serialize this data. debug serialization. No, this is not what I wanted. Uh yeah, I have to go on the I I remember on the importer. Export to console. And that did nothing because it's in debug my bad so we have the GUID no type GUID and whatever what we need is this grids level we have an empty let's add something in here our health at level 1 add let's export it again and there we go, we have a GUID and the level. That looks cool. Now let's get to uh, get to manager and let's save this. So we, we've saved uh, the whole game. So now my question is, uh, what's gonna happen when, uh, if the data is gonna be loaded into that, uh, that object that we spawn? Or is, if it's gonna throw an error or something. It did not throw an error. But let's see if we have data in this. We do. That's nice. That is nice. But this is not... Uh... Yeah, it works, but uh, it might not work always. So, so right now what, what happens is... Whenever I get this, uh, where is my service? Oh, so this is the service. Whenever, whenever the the scene is loaded, I instantiate this prefab, and it just so happens that uh, the the loader component, which is the this component, uh, just found. Uh, it might not be just uh, just that. So it found this component and it it added the data that it uh, that it had about it. But it actually it actually it could be smart. Let's see this this load. Let's see if it is uh, if it does stuff on start instead of yeah, it does stuff on start instead of uh, awake. Yeah, that's that that's why it works. Yeah, I bet if did it at uh, at awake this wouldn't have worked but on start it actually might work yeah this might actually be good 
yeah so actually we have we have the we i mean we have uh, we have this uh, upgrades manager data and the data is saved and loaded back in when we yeah this is actually cool if we have data now if we where is it clear all player prefs so we remove everything we remove the save game of the game save if we play it again we won't have any data in here boom nice Yeah, so this is actually awesome because now I can start working on the. I mean, yeah, I can upgrade the tower and have this uh, have uh, him understand upgrades and uh, instead of just uh, writing the basic uh, the basic, uh, he should use the the multiplier and set the and set the health. Nice. We're gonna we're gonna need uh, anyway. We're gonna need uh, a lot more more things in here. We're gonna need for um, for upgrading or for yeah increasing the level of a of an upgrade. We're gonna need a way. Actually, yeah. Actually, we're gonna need a way of getting all the all the upgrades. We can put them in the UI. So yeah. Might have rushed a bit with uh, removing that uh, public level property from here. Yeah, but uh, we'll deal with that when we when we get to the UI part. But for now, this is actually this is actually what I wanted. We've, we've actually done more than I uh, than I anticipated. So. Let's just rename some things in here so it matches the game. So this is the upgrades manager. And this is the upgrades manager data. We have done this task. We have done this task also and this one. Uh, I need to remove this one. And here too. Yeah, so this whole branch is done. Unfortunately, there's nothing that depends on this, so we haven't unlocked any new, any new tasks. But yeah, yeah. and uh, those four minutes actually were the the minutes I I got to get my food. I'm just gonna remove them just so it it's a round number. Yeah, cool. Well, let's see what. Uh, okay, so we've changed. Uh, actually, there are not uh, not a lot of things that have changed. So we've done something. Wait, we've done something in entity ID. What is this? Oh, we made this. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So we've made this function uh, public. I might. I'm. I'm. I'm gonna add a task for this as well. Uh, so let's go. Yes, frame. Actually, let's make. The last upgrade was update was 24. Let's make update 25. Let's um, send to board. Is there something else that I want to do? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna. Um, I want to do this for sure. I'm gonna look into this. Uh, and I think that's it. There's nothing else that I want to do. Okay, so here I need another. Make the equal um, method from. Public. Okay.
Okay, so I will have to do that. Let's just look. Uh, let's just look at. Oh, that's something I don't like. This system in here. I don't want it. It looks ugly. Yeah, I want to save the code and I want to see if that uh, broke anything. It shouldn't have done that, but yeah, everything is fine. It actually was in the upgrade definition. That's weird. Let's see the code. So we have those two. We got some methods in here now. And that part, yeah, that's fine. Some meta files, the data component, which looks fine. This is a byte array. Yeah, this looks nice. Yeah, I think that's it. That's all, all I have to do. It looks, yeah, it, it seems to, to look fine. So let's back to, to our project and let's the name of the task. So this is feature. Let's publish this. Ah, oh, come on. You know how to do it. So, Okay, so the only thing that's, that have been left for this week are, so we have the enemy definition asset, which is, um, what is the enemy? So it's this, so it, it's an enemy, defi an enemy definition defined by the name of the entity and, and its stats. And actually, yeah, I have to think about how the stats actually, actually, I'm not quite sure how the stats should look like. Okay, we're going to have a link for each stat. But how, how is it going to be used? Yeah, I, I'll have to think uh, more about this, actually. And the wave definition uh, depends on the on the uh, on the enemy definition. Because for the for the wave definition, we need uh, yeah, we actually need to to declare what type of enemies uh, are going to be spawned uh, during the wave. So the type of the enemy, the number of the enemy, and if it has a stats multiplier. And there we go. We're gonna need the link for the multiplier. Yeah, so this we actually do need a link for stats for for the yeah for the enemy. But now the, now we have the link component, so so it's not a problem. But we actually needed it because even though we don't have upgrades like we have for for the player, for the tower and whatever, we do have the stats multiplier. Um, but actually, this. No, no, no. This is fine. I was thinking maybe we can have a, a, a like a generic stats multiplier, like uh, the same uh, multiplier will be applied to all stats. But uh, it might be interesting to have a, um, to be able to 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 increase each stat uh, each stat independently or differently. So get more health but uh, so the, or the 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 health will the will increase faster than the than the strength or whatever or the speed so yeah i might just um Yeah, and also the controls manager. Yeah, so so yeah, I have I have to think more about this enemy definition. So I'm not gonna do it right now. And the controls manager also, I have to do some research on this um, player input component from uh, uh, what do you call it? 
from the input system. So yeah, I think we're gonna we're gonna stop the stream here. Uh, yeah, we've done some work. What has it been like? Uh, one and a half hours, something like that. I don't know when I when I start, like at ten thirty, maybe. Yeah. So um, yeah, this is actually good. Let's see what we've done today. So come on, and actually, yeah, the, the music just stopped. Okay, so we have the tower. Let's go to the beginning of the tower. We have the tower, and now we have those um, buttons for controlling the speed, the speed of the game. So the enemies are both spawned uh, more frequently, and uh, they are also moving faster. And we also have the health. And look at this. I ha I haven't even realized that was that was there before. So apparently we can change, damn, we can change the uh, the locale from here. Nice. Cool. I, I, I had no idea that that was there. I, I haven't seen it. I mean, maybe because I had this uh, game preview so small. But that's actually nice. I mean, we had that, that window. We, we You could have that window stick somewhere and just uh, use it but yeah, this is also nice it might be a bit uh, I ho actually I hope I can disable it because we might have UI I mean like we have here we have the health and uh, this uh, button is on top of it so I hope we can disable it localization and I don't see anything that that uh, but actually this is the project settings maybe it's something in the like the preference of the editor maybe localization yeah this awesome so I can disable it so now I can but I still can access it from here so I have this so I can change the the game from here or the the, the local from here yeah, that's nice. So so we've done this, and on top of that, we've done this uh, whole uh, upgrades uh, manager thingy. So we can uh, define upgrades and link them to to stats, uh, uh, like tower stats or uh, weapon stats or whatever. And then you can interrogate this uh, upgrades manager and uh, get the the multiplier for a for a specific stat. Get the yeah, get the multiplier for it, so you know the, the real value. Uh, yeah. Yeah, this is actually nice. We've done quite a lot today. It's gonna so now we can basically create uh, upgrades for different stats. And whenever I implement the stat, I can just use the. I can just. I mean, I can create those links. And I can create the 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 the, the upgrades. And then uh, whenever I implement uh, different parts of the game, I, I can just uh, link this. Uh, yeah, use this link. Uh, this link object to have the updates for free. I mean don't have to wait for me to implement uh, parts of the game let's say like weapons we can just uh, create the upgrades for weapons right now because whenever the, the the weapons are implemented we can just uh, uh, yeah we have the upgrades already available yeah okay okay so I'm gonna I'm gonna end the stream here so thanks everybody for being here so uh, yeah, well, I'll see you next uh, Saturday. We're gonna, we're gonna continue working on this, uh, on the on the foundation of the game, and maybe we're gonna do some more, uh, some more uh, visual stuff. So after 
I do this controls manager. We're gonna look at the uh, we're gonna work on the camera controller so we can uh, uh, look around the tower and yeah, basically start uh, implementing the gameplay. So yeah, this is gonna be this is gonna be start uh, this is gonna start to become interesting now that we have uh, more uh, yeah more parts of the foundation of the game. Yeah, so uh, yeah, thanks for being here and uh, see you next Saturday.